Jesus. <laughs> that's that's true. <laughs> little known little known fact. That's where all those hours went. <laughs> Zed Ban against Goon right off the bat by CJ. That's yeah. He does have the last pick right here, and it's not like Coco has ever really been a big Zed player. So take away the pocket pick, R Riven. Uh huh. That was a bit of an interesting selection for CJ. That is very interesting. Riven is just not a champion that we know Duke for, really. Yeah. Or Goon. I mean, I don't know. Awkward. We'll see what they, they maybe they have some sort of special mid lane pick here that they want to blind pick that is dangerous to AD assassin all ins. Could be. Callista and Maokai banned out on the Najin side of things. And there's a Rise ban. Okay. Apparently Shy not wanting to first pick it here. Uh, CJ really likes that Alistair these days. They started off a little bit lukewarm on the Alistair pickup, but it, they've really turned around and started to think that was quite important. Rumble is going to be the final ban against Shy, in spite of Duke being very good on that champion as well. Shy really hasn't been putting up very impressive performances this season so far. Yeah. And he really has liked that Rumble quite quite a bit. Very heavy Rumble priority for CJ Entis. Yeah, he has been struggling a bit. I don't think Ramus is going to help him, but uh, we'll see. I wonder, too, if Najin feels like they're comfortable forcing Shy into something like another Hecker and pick or something. The problem with, for CJ is do they take the Gragas now? Again, Watch is actually... Yeah. One of the better Gragas players, honestly. I know it's weird to say that because Watch is so thoroughly mediocre uh, as a jungler. It's his season champion. It's, it's season one champion, champion it's one, of season. Yep. What a season, and it's it's Gragas time. Yep. Uh, the summer of Gragas. But at the same time, there's the Alistair that's still available, and taking the Gnar early on here might be a bit. There we go. Okay. I think uh, that's okay. a smart pick. And. It's an interesting conundrum for CJ because you don't really want to take that Gragas if you're CJ because Ambition, a lot of the way that CJ plays drafts is they play around the fact that Ambition has a very large jungle pool uh, so that they usually ban junglers and then take something weird like Nidalee or Lee Sin. But instead it will be a Hecarim pick that is going to be dangerous. But if there's one Hecarim player that has been fearless about playing into Nar, it's been Duke. Yep, very true. I don't think he's too worried about it, and I don't think he's too worried about uh, Shai's Nar specifically. Shai has become a much better Nar player, but uh, still, I would say not one of the greatest. You know, uh, he always a, kind of avoided the champion in the past. He's not, and Duke, he's just fearless about yeah. these early pick Hecarims, where other players really don't like to get into it because they're afraid of the throws about. They're afraid of that black cleaver and getting trapped in lane and really never being able to push. But Duke, he just Feels like he can get that advantage, and yeah, you know, he's delivered. He has delivered in that matchup. CJ cycling through a lot of different stuff right now. I think this Sivir is going to be a pretty comfortable place to stop. Don't want to give Najin the Sivir and the Alistar. And there's just the typical Cloud Templar trolling. Uh, and there's the Shy Shivana. Yep, it'll be locked in. Shy is good. Really, the only one who plays Shivana here in Korea, and he is quite good at it. Yeah, we've seen it pop up a little bit in other regions like NA, but. For the most part, this is a CJ special pocket pick. I think yeah. Shivana's a perfectly fine pick right now, especially if you are as skilled at it as Shy is. Remember that SK Telecom in that best of five, that wonderful best of five that SKT played against CJ in the spring playoffs. The Shivana ended up being banned because of how well Shy did on it early in the series. Yeah. Always been a threat. Looks like OQ is going to go with the vein, and there's Rek'Sai picked up for watch this game. Okay, the Vayne pick. This is a return to something that we saw Najin heavy Vayne priority early this season. But since then, they stayed away. It was also banned a lot uh, against them. A lot of teams just taking it away because of OQ's insane mechanics. And he is one of, if not the best Vayne player in Korea. So he can win a lot of fights that might be very challenging otherwise for Najin to come through on. And they have that flank with Duke's Hecarim right here. The last pickup will just be that mid laner. Now, Coco could play this victor. It's a champion he has been delivering with in the past. And Mad Life may go for that hard engage on the Annie, or just the Nautilus and make Vayne run around without auto attacking. I don't know. I kind of like the Annie this game, but we'll see. Looks like he might go with that Nautilus. Victor locked in for Coco, and it will be the Nautilus for Mad Life. Much better composition this time from. 
CJ Entis compared to their last game, which was that train wreck comp that you can see on your screen right now on the left side. It would be pretty cool to see Goon play Echo. Do you think it's actually going to be this mid Kogma though? He's played it in the past. Um, I mean, it gives that good poke damage, obviously. The only person who's really played it this season has been Faker, or this year. I think the Cassiopeia is a better pick, yeah. Yep, they're going to lock it in. So Goong's going to take that Cassiopeia. And again, in the past, this wouldn't have been a champion that Goong would have done very well on. But this season, he's managed to finally start doing a little bit better on some of those more passive, more AP mage type of champions. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. He's looked a lot stronger. But again, we need to see him against a laner the caliber of Coco. Because it's oh, been will now. three matches since he's really gone head to head. And so the challenge may not have been there. I think he looks better. I think he'll be able to hold his own. But Coco is quite quite a handful, generally speaking. Yeah, again, I mean, Najin coming into this, defeating the three easiest teams in the league, it's a pretty, you would imagine, it's a pretty big jump in skill to go up to CJ now, even if CJ is kind of in a little bit of a slump here over the last two matches. That's right, well, I'm so happy that Shai Shivana is going to be coming back. It's something that I find very enjoyable to watch. And he's got that Sivir ult too, so ease to get into the back line on top of Goong and OQ. Najin going to have to be very good about peeling with the Rek'Sai and the Alistar to keep those two carries alive. But Najin with just a ridiculous late game composition. If they're allowed to go late, you got to think that they're going to have a pretty big advantage. Well, we'll see if they can play safe enough to do that. CJ will be trying their best to get in and dive this one. And it is time, guys. A very important matchup for both of these teams. CJ Antis versus Najin the Empire. A battle for relevancy, a battle for supremacy here in Champion Summer. Let's get in the game and see who takes it. And welcome to Summoner's Rift. CJ Entis taking on Najin the Empire. CJ fans, as usual, winning the uh, winning the cheering. The fan club tends to kind of dominate the cheering, don't they? <laughs> they do. Them indeed. and Samsung are pretty pretty strong. Uh, SKT's got a lot of fans too. Yeah, that's true too. Pretty popular team, I've heard. They've done things. They've, they've won a few, won yeah. a few tournaments. Done here okay. And there. Yeah. Got this guy in the mid lane. He's pretty good. Yeah, Yuzi Hoon, I like him. Yeah, he's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Sub's not bad, too. So, CJ doesn't have an exhaust this game. Hmm. And against the sustained damage late from Vayne and Cassiopeia, that's a, that's a bit worrisome. Um, they will have the Skirmisher Saber, so that's going to be nice at least for Shy to reduce some of the damage. But that is that is something that pops out to me immediately here as potentially being that a big issue. So it looks like CJ, they want to accelerate this game. Can they play for the mid game before Najin really starts stacking up on items? What do you think about Coco going with the Ghost this game rather than like a cleanse when he's facing a, a Hecarim, a Cassiopeia, and even like Condemns from Vayne? I, I think a bit he, risky. Uh, yeah, if he's confident in his positioning though, the only thing he really has to worry about is Cassiopeia ult. So as long as he can stay at range, I think he should be okay. But yeah, not not too many stuns or fears to get to get worried about. And if he wants that sustained damage in the fight, the ability to kite, he's gonna be worried about that with Coco and Duke really kind of making a beeline at him in these team fights. Now Najin's really item dependent, and Najin, we talk about them as a team. They are so good in lane. This is a team that excels in the laning phase but doesn't necessarily have the clearest shot calling in the late game. That's sort of where they fall apart. If they get that big lead in lane, they're good to go. They can close a game. Yeah. But if it's even and they start hitting the, the mid or late game, that's where they, they don't do so well. And CJ is a little bit weaker in the laning phase, but with, generally speaking, much better shot calling and team fighting late. Uh, they have really good synergy with each other, whereas Najin's synergy, a bit lacking, uh, but definitely bullies generally in the lane. So I'm interested to see where this goes. Najin has to be very patient this game. They're going to have a vein that needs to grow and get items. Goon's going to have to stack the tier. Duke really is going to need a couple items to work with right here as well. And so they have to make sure that they don't overcommit too early 
early dragons or anything like that where they might find themselves in a power drop in fighting. Yeah, you got to feel like CJ at the top of their game would be able to take Najin, the Najin that we've seen, but the question is, you know, are they at the top of their game? And it's it's only been a couple days since they've played. They haven't had, like, a ton of time to prepare for this match. Yeah, and there's Watch just getting in the enemy jungle early. Why not? Yeah. Mad Life going to go ahead and clear out a tunnel. So taking a look already, and this has really been Watch's play. He's not the most spectacular ganker. Uh, Duke, you can see right there with his 75% win rate on Hecarim and 10 KDA. That is wow. a very impressive score for his yeah. Hecarim play. A 10 KDA, that's pretty impressive. I wonder how many games that's he's, crossed, though. He's just fearless in blind picking it. And the fact that he is so confident in this champion and the fact that they do win so many games on it really helps out Najin's draft because obviously Hecarim's a, a really great champion in the current meta. The problem is, is the Gnar. And... The fact that he does need that time to scale to be effective. But if you're a really good Hecarim player and you can kind of go even and you can wait out till you get some of those items, uh, you're absolutely terrifying in the late game. Yep, Shy getting a nice deep ward down. Going to keep himself a little bit safer as he pushes up a bit farther in lane. I suppose the idea, of course, is uh, as with many smite top laners, is to just push lane up, go farm, push lane up, go farm. Yeah, <laughs> in Shai's, the jungle rather. Shy's really good at doing that too. Yeah. Shy has great has a great sense as a player for when he can go and start farming the enemy jungle, when he can proxy farm. He plays very well around his knowledge of where the enemy can be on the map and gets some really good wards down as well. So this is Shy. This is really Shy as a very long term veteran and a relatively conservative player. Oh yeah, a player too who like really knows his limits as well, which is what gives him a lot of his success too. Knows what he can accomplish with that. Definitely does. One of the uh, one of the oldest players time-wise as we see Madlife grab here for a little bit of trading here. Not bad, Grog is coming down though. Ambition will see if he can do anything. Trying to bait in OQ and Pier. OQ really doesn't want to walk forward right there. Yeah. They don't have any vision in the river. Yeah, Shy Ambition and Mad Life have all been around for a long, long time. Yeah, especially Mad Life and Ambition. Yep. So, uh, quite, quite long careers at this stage. They're way up there with you know some of the Chinese players like Zetai that have been forever in the scene of League of Legends over in China. Uh, it's fun to see that these guys have had such stable and successful careers. Yeah, uh, they've won tournaments in many different places. Some of them have been to the World Finals. Yep. Shy and Mad Life, part of the uh, runner-up team at Season 2 Worlds against the Taipei Assassins. This top lane is going to be like reverse tug of war. It's going to be like push of war, I guess, you know? <laughs> Who can shove their, way, their uh, lane and go back and farm the jungle fast enough. I don't want to shove Wayne. Shove, he's, he's, shove, shove their Wayne. He's, he's a nice guy. That's right. Garth doesn't like that. <laughs> He'll get mad. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, this this is... Dodgen wants this to be a very slow, very elongated game right here. So they're going to be happy with a lack of early aggression and just the focus on farming. Well, I'm not. Well, I'm sorry. I'm not happy about that at all. Well, I'm sorry Dodgen doesn't make you happy, Doha. They should. They should make you happy? Yeah. Well, maybe they'll do it by dying really fast here and fighting around this dragon when they shouldn't. Maybe. I'd say it's possible. Would that, would that please you, Doa? <laughs> it would please me greatly. <laughs> Doa confirmed Najin hater. I'm I'm just confirmed kill lover. That's that's all. I, in League of Legends. I should, I should make that specification, shouldn't I? Doa, you almost let out the fact that you're <laughs> oh, actually no. a serial killer. That's right. Oh, I love that Dexter show. Oh, man. <laughs> Great ideas. I mean, great plot. <laughs> Neither of those Dark. are actually true. That's that's actually the funny part about that statement. Yeah. Yeah. I stopped watching that show after season two because it got so ridiculous. I, I, I struggled through season one. I'm like, no. No, yeah. I don't think so. Nope. I'm sorry for people who like Dexter out there. That show actually sucks. It was pretty bad, yeah. I mean, if you like it, you know, more power to you, but... Nope. If you like it, I'm judging you right now. Okay. You are a lesser human being than, than Monte Cristo if you like Dexter. Well, I mean, that's pretty obvious. Wow. Is it? Is it really? 
You know, between games, Monty pulls out his hand mirror and just like stares into it. Uh huh. Like, kind of makes sort of a. It sort of looks like the blue steel face from Zoolander. <laughs> he just does that. It's actually. Uh, I'm just impersonating Deficio. <laughs> 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 yeah. There you go. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> yep. Although, uh, you can't see Deficio's reflection in a mirror, so that's it's hard to do. <laughs> Deficio confirmed vampire. <laughs> oh, We love you, Deficio. We do. <laughs> well, you know, while we've been talking, uh, not a lot has happened. <laughs> Shocking. Yeah. There's been some really exciting laning going on. That's right. You know, Goong was uh, carefully stacking his tier in the mid lane. Mm. Using those abilities, stacking that tier. It's right. Duke and Shy happily getting their skirmisher sabers. It's been, a, it's been a grand old time here in Summoner's Rift. Yep. People acknowledging that the dragon exists, but not really, not really going for it. Not so much. This is a 20 minute no rush game. I guess so. <laughs> oh, Which those were the days. Now just like, we fooled them. This is to our advantage. Ha ha. That's right. Stockpiling Zergling somewhere. Well, Ambition coming over the wall. There we go. Flash Body Slam. Nice knockback on the Goong. There's some action. Chaos Storm chasing Goong down. Coco flashes for the auto attack. Oh, and he gets him with the Death Laser. First blood going to Coco. That's what I'm talking about. A great gank. Yeah, beautifully right executed. Really nicely done mechanically from Ambition to set that up using the Flash and the body slide and his ultimate to get Goong, who is playing pretty safely close to his turret, honestly. Let's take yeah. a look at that. I mean, Goong is coming back right there. What a good flash. He starts the body slam, flashes in the middle of it while he's going over the wall, and Goong right there. I question if he could have gotten out of that if he didn't turn back. Uh, it it would was have been, really close. would have been really close. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Either way, you th you'd think you'd be safe that close to turret, right? Yeah, it wasn't. It was, and especially because if we looked, Watch was on the top side of the jungle by all by all rights. Uh, Goom was playing that pretty safely. It was just a great play from Ambition. Yeah, to set it up. The plays that he makes now from the jungle. If you would have told me that he'd be making those plays a few months ago, I would not have believed you. Now it is. Smite Wars time. Shy dumps his red smite on top of Duke right there. Gets a pretty good amount of damage, actually. Duke's yeah. still waiting to get his Cinder Hulk. Hasn't completed that item yet. And now, because Shy started Ruby Crystal, so he got his item faster, whereas Duke had to start the Flask. So he'll have a little bit more sustain, but slower pickup for the actual enchant on that item. It's interesting. The Ruby Crystal start on the Shivana. Uh, Shy always does that, actually, yeah. on the, on the uh, Smite Shivana. I mean, that right there gives you an advantage over a lot of other Smite top laners because you normally have the Flask. Yeah, well. Or a Doran's item. Very yeah. cool. Yeah, Doran's item is a little bit more useful early, but the, the Ruby Crystal allows you to get your first item. And just a matter of changing the power spike a little bit where you're not going to be as efficient early. But now you can see, look at this. Now oh, you yeah. can really go for Duke. Well, I mean, the other part of it, too, is that uh, in a in a 1v1 where the goal is to just push back and forth, you know, the faster you can get that bomby Cinder into the uh, Cinder Hulk enchant, the, the better you'll be able to do that in the 1v1. Yeah, a lot of damage here, as we can see, onto the Tier 1 of Nodge. And to be expected, Space has all that wave clear at the moment. Still a very... Oh, boy. Goog has no mana. Yeah, getting pushed right out of lane there. Oh, oh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Chaos Storm doing a little work right there. And now they've got an opportunity to take the dragon. So Najin should definitely just let this one go. Yeah, it's not they... too early. You know, they, they delayed a dragon until about 12, 13 minutes here. They don't have to fight this at all. Yeah. And it doesn't look like they will. They know that uh, it would be pretty much certain doom right now without, without Goom around. And so, first dragon goes to CJ. So far, pretty crisp play from CJ. Yeah, using the Chaos Storm just to push Goong out there, so they had an opportunity to start going for this dragon. They should know that they really have to keep on stacking these dragons in order to stay competitive in the late game against Najin. Yeah. So they go ahead and execute on that. Uh, CJ definitely looking much more composed than they did against Jin Air. I would say so. I would definitely agree there. And I mean, Najin, to their credit, they've been trying to do what they need to do. They've been trying to play safe. Just farm up, 
and CJ has found these little ways to get advantages despite Najin playing very safe. Yeah, and it's really not much of an advantage, right? We're talking about a thousand gold, at, at least at the yeah. moment, into Dragon. So every little bit helps. Every little bit does help. That's right. But definitely not the end of the world. And look at this Duke going for that home guard in champ. Meanwhile, Shy is starting to move towards a Randuin's Omen already. Duke not even finishing. His Cinder Hulk yet? Man, Shy is on track to just destroy OQ when he gets on top of him if he finishes as, finishes that Randuin's quickly. It's going to be scary, yeah, and that is scary. that is why we see Shy's Shivana band a lot of the time. He's the guy. He is the guy who pulls this off. He's the only player who in Korea who does this. Very few people worldwide will play Shivana right now, even though she's a great champion with yeah. with Smite early. Look at this. You can do all this dirty farming as well, too, if you want to. Yep, they know that Watch is on the bottom side. Yep. And this is what we were talking about earlier with Shy. Look how annoying he gets on this champion. He is just a, a guy who can really use this Shivana to maximum yeah. effect. Go ahead, take those Krugs away. Now Shy taking a trip right through. He's got his ultimate. This is dangerous for Goong, actually. Yeah, I mean, I think you might have an opportunity, or he was thinking about trying to maybe come over the wall, but... Just going to go back up and harass Duke a little bit more, it looks like. That's so annoying. Duke trying to push the wave forward, but Shy comes back. Of course, he's using that burnout to move around the map so quickly. Yeah. That's the nice thing about it is that you really do have a ton of mobility with burnout. And Duke is also itemized against physical damage here with the Ninja Tabby, so he's... Yeah, I mean, that's got going to help a little bit against Shivana, but... Not quite so much, and now the turret nearly dead in that top side. Ambition going to go ahead and take away the red buff this time. Yeah. Well, meanwhile, Najin's going to be able to steal the Raptors on the CJ side of things, so going to get a little bit out of it too. Yeah, Shy. I mean, you can just sit there and kind of auto attack your opponent in uh, in lane as your burnout takes down minions for you. It's very easy. So. CJ doing a great job. They've kept the lanes pushed. They've gotten good chip damage onto the turret already by using their superior lanes. And now they're in a position to really swing this game in terms of gold. There's a fight going on. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, Watch getting very, very close here. Pure getting caught out. And Mad Life, can he get another catch here? Flashes over the wall. OQ having to tumble away. They're not going to follow. They know Goong was coming down. That would have been a little bit too dangerous to pursue. And CJ again, you know, getting those little edges. Yeah, and Duke at least keeping this one pushed up now so that his turret isn't going to go down. But this is this is where it starts to get scary. And I don't know about Najin trying to make these plays on the bottom side of the map right now. I think they should just use Watch to hold on to towers as long as possible because if it goes badly and they do get chunked out, well, then those towers are going to start to fall very quickly. They need to hold people in lane as long as possible so that space isn't freed up on the map to just go and... Push, push, push with that big wave clear. Ambition getting caught a little bit. Yep, he tried to go and steal that blue condemned against the wall. OQ looking for a kill there. Ambition will go down. OQ gets it. So just trying a little bit too hard to counter jungle there. Yeah, that's a big kill for Vayne also early on. And Mad Life just wasn't there to back up Ambition while he walked in a little bit alone. A mistake right there from Ambition after that great early gank. Awesome, his life evens us up in terms of kills and starts to get OQ ahead. OQ with red buff, now that is huge. Yeah, he can really do a lot of damage to people if he wants to, and with that next dragon coming up, I think he'll still have a little bit of red buff when it comes up. So we'll see if they want to try to use that to uh, just poke out CJ right before they uh, have to worry about dragon or something. Yeah, that's gonna be quite important. Both junglers just going on a mission into their jungle, but. Blue side really does have the advantage in terms of smite because obviously that Krug buff or the Raptor buff not really going to help you in lane, but that Gromp buff in terms of trading from top laner to top laner is pretty huge. So in the in the instance that we have two smite tops like this, I think Blue side really has a good edge hmm. just because that Gromp can be farmed over and over and over again, give you that big damage back onto the other top laner. Sure enough, and Duke doing a bit of damage to Shy. So Shy returning in kind, and he can really just auto down that turret whenever he wants to. Yeah, Duke just doesn't do anything at this point, and that's going to be there it for it the goes. tower. Nice job by Shy. Yeah, we'll see if Shy goes after Duke. Nope. Just going to let him go. But either way, first turret of the game taken 1v1 by Shy versus Duke up in that top lane. CJ jumping up to a little bit of a lead, about 2k gold. Something uh, that Najin can certainly make up. 
But for now, Shy's dominating top lane performance really helping out CJ this game. Well, Duke wanted this early pick Hecarim, and he wasn't able to hold against Shy's Shivana. And now Shy has been opened up. He's been unleashed on this map. Goong oh. is pretty low. He's going to back off right there. Watch C's ambition. So they know this dive might be coming in. They have no idea. Well, watch knock back into the bot lane. Manages to tunnel through over to Pure. That was a close call. That was a really good flash tunnel right there from yeah. Watch to avoid the ultimate from ambition and the engage there from CJ. Yeah, I thought he was in big trouble there. Oh, Shy is still being annoying. <laughs> oh, Duke manages to get the Ancient Krug, though. What do you do against this, though? Shy's split pushing is a major, major threat at the moment. Ambition now going to start soloing the Dragon. Space and Mad Life get in there just in time to put the last finishing touches on it, and that's going to be two up. Dragon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're going to go in on the Pure here. Madlife trying to make GP. a play. Teleport coming down for CJ. Shy coming in from behind. Pure stunned. What's Shy going to decide to do here? Pure going in for the headbutt. Pulverize. Teleport coming down as well. Najin OQ manages to push Shy back. Shy dragons to send back into the fight here. Trying to zone out OQ. He's doing a good job of this. But Duke over the top gets the fear. There goes Madlife. Space and OQ dueling. Space wins it. Gets a double kill. There's another one coming in for Coco. A double for him. Coco and Shy just barely Duke. alive here. Duke can chase down Duke. Coco. Uh-oh. Run! <laughs> he doesn't have a flash. He doesn't have a way to get away. And he's leading him right to Shy. They have to get back to turret here. Duke, does he go for it? He gets the kill, and that's going to be enough. <laughs> so the top laner surviving through that. A four for four. Dragon, though, second one going to CJ. You're still going to take that if you're not, Jin. Oh, yeah. You didn't lose your bot lane turret. You haven't gotten that big gold swing. It doesn't really matter if CJ has two dragons. What matters is that you were able to go even for kills. Take a look at that again. So a gravity crazy field fight. used early right there. Shy comes in, not in full HP. Oki is just going to start tumbling out of the way. He doesn't get the stun onto Shy, so Shy is able to re-engage immediately. But Duke all over space right here. Oku does some nice kiting. Good save on the ultimate by Duke. That does help OQ a lot. But the scrying orb going to find Duke in the, or uh, OQ in the brush, rather. And Coco cleans up Goong on the outside. And then that prolonged little chase as Coco finds out what it's like to be run down by cavalry <laughs> as an infantryman. It's not very pleasant. You know, I would just, like, uh, turn that third leg around, like, down behind him so you can just, like, or a third arm, and just try to, like, run faster with it. I don't know. I don't know if you can do it. I don't know if it stretches that far. Victor, you, you think he'd have some sort of plan for when things go awry, you know? When the cavalry comes in. That's right. He needs, like, a, a jetpack, like Boba Fett or something, you know? Well, the crazy thing about that fight is that Duke got three kills. And that may be what they need to get him enough items to be able to do well in this top lane. Notice that he finally has that spirit visage also. Hmm. After struggling early with just the Ninja Tabby, he's got some MR right now. And Shivana is somewhat a dual threat in terms of her damage output. So he's getting to a point where he may be able to hold, but he's also not doing damage. Um, and yes, they have a lot of damage sources on this team, but at the same time, if you're Duke, it sure would be great to one-shot that victor. Would feel pretty good. Space trying to go after some of these wards here. Ava with watch there. You have to be careful. Age is also completed for Notch, and now hmm. it's a nice little pickup. Yeah, especially against, like you said, that mixed damage from Shy, the AP from Coco. Some kills being spread out pretty nicely on CJ as well, though. Three for Coco, two for Space. Not too bad. Early distortion enchant from Goong here with those two summoner spells. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, uh -oh. OQ. OQ finds Space, and I think he's going to get that kill. He will. OQ just tracks down Space for the kill. And that's why you have oh, OQ no. on your team, is that he's a player who will make these 1v1 outplays, and he will get you advantages based on them. Space. No summoners in that last fight. Oku saw a chance to go in where he's got that Vayne passive, so he knew that because he had flash and space didn't, even though space was going to be able to use his ultimate right there, he would win. Space went full scuttle crab there. <laughs> the, the rift coward just yep. running away. That's right. Dealing no damage. Better ult out of there, and it's actually going to cost CJ a bot turret, too. This is what Najin's strength is. Yeah. So they about even things up in terms of gold as well. So they're looking strong going into the late game. 
Yeah, they they haven't exactly played super safe, but they've played safe enough that they've got the items they need to go into a, a fairly stable mid-game. Well, here's where Oku gets scary. Oku has a farm advantage. Oku has, is 2-1-3 and three as Vayne. Let's take a look at how this unfolds. That's just a great... Oh, man. I mean, he hits him with the Blade of the Ruin King, and there's the Flash. He had the Summoner Spell advantage, so pretty easy kill from Oku, but yep. good read. Duke's just going to use his ult to escape from a potential gank here in the top side as Ambition and Mad Life look for a kill. Yep, they tried. Now, CJ's warding is pretty decent. nanjun has got a couple deep ones in bot, too, so really I suppose it's about a wash as far as vision goes. CJ with just a bit more vision up in the top. Yeah, well, they want to help out Chai with this split push because he's been right. doing so well with it so far. Duke going into a frozen heart now. And this accelerated last whisper that OQ is going to get as a result of that 1v1 kill and the tower, de the tower death is going to be very helpful because Shai is starting to get scary in terms of how much armor he has. So that's going to be a very important tipping point here in terms of itemization for Najin. So will. Najin pushing uh, into this mid lane turret now too. See if CJ can defend it. Ambition and Madlife there to try to help out. Space bait? needs to come up from the bottom lane. But they're trying to bait Space mm. into coming up from the bottom lane right there. What Najin right. did was they put a bunch of wards down in the bottom side and they knew that Space might be lured up there as a result of the need for the Sivir wave clear. But he doesn't fall for it and Najin just backs off now that Victor's back. It's a nice try. Yep. Smart plan. For now, though, that mid lane turret nearly about ready to go down in CJ's favor. And really, the bot turret is very low as well. So CJ could come back and get a pretty big map advantage. If they can win like a small skirmish, they can take both outer turrets that are left very easily. Yeah, you're, you're definitely right. This could be a really big gold, squee gold swing. Shy goes back to farm right as the turret comes up. He has thorn mail now, still no last whisper. I don't know if Najin can fight this. Uh, looks like they may be inclined to try here. They've activated the dragon already, I believe. No, not quite. Okay. Putting down double pink wards. Play very safe. You know, some of these aspects about Najin's communication that really bring up a lot of questions. It's a very avoidable situation right there. Takes longer to burn through him, I guess. Maybe not that long. <laughs> well... Najin looks pretty pretty afraid to engage on this right now. CJ should be very confident right here. Look at what Shy is doing in, in terms of pushing up. And they have a they have a little wave clear in mid lane too. They may be able to take the mid turret and go for a dragon at the same time. Well, maneuvering back. Shy gonna take a red buff. This is really patient. This is a very good play from CJ, knowing that they have this is their time for, that they're going to be powerful and using it to take everything they possibly can. And they're thinking about going for that dragon. Shy and Duke just walking down now, not wanting to use those teleports. Najin trying to push CJ away, but we've got uh -oh, like a Shai. double top laner flank coming back in. Can Shy get in on this? Oh, I don't know. Dragon goes to CJ. Pure trying to make a play here. There goes Ambition. Nice headbutt oh onto Pure. My. Wow, Shy over the top here, distracting a lot of Najin, and that's letting CJ come in with this Sivir ultimate doing a lot of damage. Duke, though, turns things around, but he's kind of on his own. Nice body slam. Duke pushed back by the explosive cast, has to ult away. They'll get the kill on Pier, they'll get the kill on Duke. Mad Life picking up a bloodthirsty support kill there. There goes Goom Coco, grabbing the mid lane 1v1. OQ trying to maneuver around, trying to get something done, but he can't do it. CJ handily winning that fight. And they just knew they were more powerful right there. First off, Shy had already gone back to shop uh, when that had happened, and so he was able to put more pressure down. Look at the split afterwards. They get two towers, we the knew dragon, that was happen. a big team fight win, and they may take more than that as well. Najin should definitely not have tried to make a play right there. They weren't in a good position in terms of their power to do that. Well, what did we that say, right? That is a right? huge amount of gold. As soon as CJ wins a small fight, those outer turrets are going down, and here's the fight. Yeah, and right there, too, there's so much threat from Shy at the back, and Najin just goes into the choke. Goon gets hit. Goon is doing no damage, despite of having his ghost on for this fight, really. And Mad Life manages to lock OQ down. Chaos Storm already used, but Duke 
getting too aggressive on the flank, can't really get much done, has to ult out. And at this point, Mad Life just hooks him right back oh, in. Oh, Goong hit nobody with his ult. He slowed some, but Goong, yeah. uh, Goong had held onto that ult for the entire team fight right there because he was so busy trying to get out of danger. Probably should have front loaded it at the very least. And that was a bit sloppy from Najin. And now there's the big swing, 6K gold, Najin down. Man, look at that. And it hurts to give up a third dragon like that, but sometimes you just gotta do it. You have to maintain uh, just your towers and not try and swing the gold too much so that you can make that fight at four and, or maybe even five. Shy is becoming quite, quite the uh, split pushing Terra. Now that he's got the thorn mail too, he's at that point where he can just jump on OQ and just blow him up. OQ still without the last whisper. That's the really big, big part of this too is that Shy had just finished the thorn mail on his previous buy and Oki was still just searching for the last whisper right there. So itemization definitely in favor oh, yeah. Space of CJ has during that dragon engagement. Yep. And now you start to see not many wards on the CJ side from Najin now. This map control swinging firmly over to CJ side. So. I gotta say, I, I even though Najin shouldn't have fought that last fight, I really do like how CJ's been sort of subtly maneuvering things their way all game long, and now that was like the big payoff, right? They put enough pressure on that Najin felt they needed to kind of make that bad decision. CJ's played the macro game very well. Oh, yeah. All right, here we go. Goon getting caught out a little bit. You're yeah. gonna go in. Oh, wow. You're gonna Pure. pop his ult. Gets hooked, gets very, very low though. Watch coming in, can't get a lot done. Goon managed to get the kill on Coco, never mind. Oku starting to go off here. CJ may have uh, underestimated this vein. Well, Oops. Shy wasn't there. Shy is a yeah. major factor in these team fights. Najin actually just gonna go for a Baron right now. Hmm. They can do it, they could try. Uh, Ambition's still alive though. I don't know if this Baron is really safe enough. I mean, you've still got Ambition there. Shy and Space are going to be very I dangerous. I think you go for it. You have Cassiopeia yeah. in vain. You have the Void Rush coming back in. Okay. They're going to go for it. Shy has TP, but I think you can go for it. Well, there's a tunnel there. Ambition finding it. There's a ward. Shy, yep. Teleporting back in. Baron getting very low. Can Ambition steal it? He's waiting. He's just hanging out there. No. It does go over to Nodge and Ambition low. They get a couple kills on either side. Space running away. Just jumped on by Duke. Space getting way too close. And Shy on his own now. Double kill for OQ, make that nearly a triple, but Goon gets it. Najin turning things right back around. There's still 4K behind, but they've got the Baron now. They've got the initiative. They need to take some objectives off of this, though. Well, when we talk about these little skirmishes, that's where champions like Vayne and Cassiopeia can really shine. Right. And this was a great call. They have so much Baron damage right here. It gets low, but Goon has the smite, or I mean, a shy, or sorry, Duke has the higher smite. He's a higher level than Ambition. So he's able to pull that one off, and then space still very low in terms of HP, and Shy just can't do anything by himself. Pretty much. Wow, so now they pull back to within 2K. 11 to 11 will be our kills. Pretty back and forth game so far, kind of what we were expecting here. And suddenly going from nearly a 7,000 gold deficit up to only a 2,000 gold deficit. Najin catching up pretty quickly, and now getting this final outer turret. It's gonna about tie up the gold. I really like the, what we're seeing from both teams this game. They're, 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 each team is getting a little bit of a fight their way uh, around an objective. And once they get an advantage, like we saw CJ jumping out with three turrets and a dragon at a big team fight win. When Najin got that little bit of an advantage, they go for the dragon, they take or the Baron, they take that, they get a few turrets off of it as well. Each team doing a great job of maximizing their power. So CJ's main hope now in this game lies in those dragons. And the next one comes up in about 25 seconds. They're up three to zero. So if they can put that, if they can get the fourth dragon and put that fifth dragon pressure onto Najin, that's gonna be very nice for CJ. Meanwhile, ooh, nearly catching watch there. Watch smartly diving behind the turret right there, which does mean that Nautilus can't hook through it. Yep. And instead gets pulled to it instead. Nice little juke. That's right. But this is great for Najin. It means that they're going to have a Baron fight that they, a Baron empowered fight around this dragon rather, that they're, they're going to have a big advantage in. So they have that Baron buff. They can go ahead and push through and they have to fight this one. They cannot let CJ get another dragon. Well, dragon already about half health. CJ trying to take it. 
Najin really needs to prevent this from happening to keep this comeback going. Dragon getting very low. Who gets it? It's going to be Krog as CJ picks up their fourth. But here comes Najin. OQ a little bit low. Already has to back up. OQ in a lot of trouble now. Whoa, here we go. Nice knock up. And can CJ survive this? They're going to turn it around to kill for space. And a double kill comes in for Coco. CJ gets the Dragon. They win the fight. And OQ can't quite hang with it. CJ turning it back around again. And now they have that fourth dragon. Now they have that gold lead again. They can take another one of these tier two turrets, only losing space in that fight. One for four. Man, this has been a back and forth game. When CJ let Najin get through the choke point into the river, I thought they had lost for sure. But instead, they have some very good kiting. They use the Sivir all well. And that fight was really all Coco from the flank right there. Pure tried to CC him, but he's doing so much damage. And the fact that OQ got chunked out so early on was absolutely crucial, too. He's going to tumble forward right oh, there. Oh, took a laser to the face. Look at face. that. Bad Life with the instant ultimate onto him as well. That means this fight is a 4v5 for a lot of the time. And just the poke. Look how well Coco is doing. He gets the ult on there, or the gravity field on Alistair and the ult onto him as well. OQ tries to get into the back line, but Duke is already dead. Great team fighting on Victor from Coco. Yeah, and this is just CJ doing what CJ does. I mean, for years, this team has had really fantastic team fighting, and they aren't really slowing up this game. I'm, I'm glad CJ is showing up today, man. This is the CJ I wanted to see. Yeah, definitely. Well, Najin, you know, they're still they're still in this, but definitely. it's it, CJ is controlling the tempo of this game. Getting that fourth dragon was absolutely huge, CJ. Securing it in a bit of a 50-50, but Ambition comes through. Now they've got the turret edge as well. And man, just poking out OQ with that death ray and then hitting him with the, the depth charge early on was absolutely crucial. Yeah, Coco saw OQ was about to come into the fight, laid down that laser, OQ tumbled right into it, and then got at the end of the tumble, uh, tumble just in range of Mad, Light's, Mad Life's ultimate it's and really immediately good. leave. Very, very good fight. So Goom, though, struggling a little bit more on this Cassiopeia. Yeah, there's a yeah. lot of kite threat. Well, we've seen this kind of thing, too, from Goom when he plays, you know, a non-assassin champion. He does okay, but that's about it. He's never really been spectacular himself on a, on a Cassiopeia, right? He's, he's passably good, but I think they need him to be a little bit more than that in this match. Yeah, he has to be responsible for a lot of the damage because Duke just isn't going to do it. I mean, yeah. Duke has a phage now and he will be building into that Trinity Force. Actually, both of our top laners having phages at the moment, uh, but that is a ways out yet. And Baron gonna be up in a minute 30. They do have control over the river and over that crab. Maybe they can force a fight, but we're kind of back to square one here as we move towards six items. I mean, that gold difference not too impactful at the moment. Yeah, Najin may be worried about Hecarim's damage at the moment, but don't worry, it's just a phage. He'll get through it. Oh, ah, it was awful. I'm sorry. Oh, Coco, trying to dial in the the mad hacks to try to. Is that what Victor does? Yeah, to dial much. in the mad hacks. That's right. Elite hacksaws. He can handle it. He has the technology. Well, no one would debate that. Why would you want monitors behind you, though? Why would anyone want to spin around to look at more of the screens? You know what's hilarious is that they're also holographic screens, so theoretically they could spin around him very easily because yeah. they have no mass. Exactly. He should never actually need to turn. That's very poor design. Get it together, Victor. That must be like, that's like the Windows 8 Victor <laughs> OS there. <laughs> it's like the tiles are just not working, man. Najin looking for a pick here. Oh. Uh, yep. Najin getting out in front of CJ. This is a bit awkward. Nice slow for CJ. They may engage. There's a Sivir ultimate. They catch watch. OQ on the run already. Tunnels through. Duke trying to get to the back lines. They run away. Shy over the top. Gets pushed back by the Condemn immediately. But look at space. So much protection. OQ trying to take down Shy. Shy getting very low. Manages to barely make out. Ambition comes in with the first kill of the fight. Goon just throws his ult out. Doesn't have any support. Has to run immediately. Coco, the kills piling in for CJ. There's a double now for Coco and OQ on the run. Teleport coming in. Shy wants to do it. Shivana does. He doesn't have his ultimate, though. OQ's still getting very, very low. Yeah, this is not working. OQ tumbling to oblivion. 
And CJ, that's going to be a, a very easy inhibitor, I think. Wow, if Shy had died right there, that may have been a very different fight. Could have been. Because that could have been Duke coming back in with a re-engage after going home and the teleport. Instead, Shy absorbs all that damage and is able just to go home and instantly re regenerate. This is going to be CJ's oh, game right here. Oh, they're going to try it. Yeah, Pure coming up in three. Duke's still looking healthy. Ambition a bit low. They're going to go after the Nexus turrets now. There goes one. They take down Duke. Pure can't do anything by himself. He's too low. Nexus turret. Here comes Watch. Second Nexus turret goes down. Nice double knockup. Watch doing as much as he can, but the Nexus getting lower. Goon back up. OQ in 10. Double kill again for Coco, but there goes the Nexus. And CJ off of some fantastic team fighting. Will take game one. Duke's like, yep, I got big. I helped out. That's what Shivana does. I think you I think you really have to get shy off that Shivana because yeah, the no way kidding. that he was able just to control the game. We saw so many times where he's pushing top, where Duke was constantly having to respond to him, where where Chai had the initiative on these team fights, but CJ mostly played that very, very well. They had a really tight early game. They got that first blood, and Najin, you could see they're just not the same level of synergy and team fighting. We, we talked about the, the strengths of these teams. Yes, Najin had that strong laning phase. Yes, OQ was able to get some solo kills. These are what we expect from these teams, but they just don't hold it together late quite as well. And that means that CJ is going to come out with the team fight win. And Coco, what a beautiful victor game. Yeah, no kidding, man. 10 2 and 8 at the end on that victor. Really playing quite splendidly. We'll see who gets the MVP. Well, we'll see if they can fight back enough to tie things up in game two. Picks and bans time for Najin versus CJ. And we will see. There's a Maokai ban against Shy. No Shivana yet. And I wouldn't think Duke would play it. Nobody really plays it besides Shy. Right. Not actively anymore. There yeah. was a little bit, as soon as uh, we saw that top lane spike, there was a little bit of experimentation with it with a few top laners. But definitely nobody has been playing it recently. Gragas banned against Watch. Probably a good idea to keep that away from him since uh, CJ is on red side this game. Yeah, they're not going to be able to first pick it this time. Yep. Ambition did really well on that champion last game, too. Really good game across the board for uh, CJ, actually. A lot, of, a lot of plays made across lanes. There's a rumble ban. Lots of top lane bans, yep. which is interesting to me because it's been Coco who's been doing so well in that mid lane. And the, I think the biggest discrepancy between CJ and lanes uh, and Najin is that Kung is the weaker mid laner. They have the stronger AD carry, but the weaker mid laner. So, why wouldn't you give Goong a little bit of a helping hand right there? LeBlanc going to be banned. It actually dropped all the way through picks and bans last game. Now, what's the last ban for CJ going to be? Shivana's still available, actually. Yeah, they didn't ban it. Yeah. Decided that that wasn't a threat. Maybe Duke thinks he has an answer as long as he doesn't early pick the Hecarim. There's the Rise ban. That's not going to be available. Will they take the Alistar first? Sivir available as well, too, but Alistar has been the priority there. It will be picked up by Najin. So what do you think? Uh, Rex Eye Sivir for CJ? Probably. Yeah, makes sense. Probably going to be Rex Eye Sivir. They could take the Hecarim. Shy is really not a good Hecarim player, though, is yeah. the thing. With how well that Shivana did, too, I really am surprised. You know, although I suppose Alisar does provide more answers to the Shivana than the, uh, well, no, they had him last game, didn't they? So I don't know. I don't know why you don't pick it. There we go. Sivir and Rek'Sai. That makes more sense. Yeah. I. CJ has been one of the worst teams at playing Hecarim. Yeah. Uh, we've seen them really struggle with this champion. We saw him struggle with it in spring. We've seen him struggle with it in summer. I think, I, I think, I think Shy is something like three and seven on Hecarim all time. I think we're seeing the mind game. CJ saying, hey, if you don't pick Hecarim, we're going to take it away. And so then when Najin picks Hecarim, they can just take Shivana. There we go. Mind games, man. I think they may see that mind game coming. And CJ is going to have to pick one of their solo lanes, uh, unless Najin really wants to pick up the victor right now. Well, if I saw that mind game coming, Najin had better see it. Otherwise, there's a problem. And they may take the Hecarim anyway. They yeah. will. 
Shy is 3-7 and seven all time on Hecarim. So they actually are going to let CJ wow. counterpick both solo lanes at once here. This is a I, bit I, interesting. Callista's not available. There's no, Sivir's not available. There's no big, really dangerous AD carry pick that Najin can grab here. Yeah, if you're CJ, you just take both solo lanes, so you get the counter pick on whatever AD carry they're going to be going in, and you get the counter pick on the duo lane as well. Yeah. This is a weird draft from Najin. They are apparently very confident in their composition, even though they couldn't execute it in the last game. So not needing to pick the top lane, I suppose. Is Azir what you want to go with if you're Coco? I think Azir is a strong pick pretty much in any situation. They have that ability to play, but I mean, Coco did well with Victor. Why not just take the Victor again? Yeah, exactly. Shivana Victor, grab it. Don't need to really pick the support. They are going to leave that mid lane pick for last, though. I mean, they, they may be slightly worried about the jungle pickup right here for Victor. Oh my, and we're just going to see the same composition. Yeah, I mean, Najin's saying, hey, you know, we feel that we could do better than we did last game. I, I don't know, though. <laughs> are we literally going to see the exact same game again? The only difference is that there's Rek'Sai instead of Grokus. And to be fair, with the Cassiopeia and the Vayne, who are relatively short range, that is a pretty important difference. That it's is true. big. And the Echo maybe coming in for the jungle pick right here. That would definitely mix things up on the side of Najin, but they're going to go for the much more bland Evelyn, I think. No, it's much more watch Evelyn, you mean. Yeah, I said yeah. bland already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll give you that one. And yeah, why not? Just pick it. Pick the victor. Why not? It's like, well, this is the same game over again, I guess. Theoretically, and Najin... And the only difference on either team is going to be the jungler. Najin wants to say, you're not going to see the same game over again. <laughs> I love this confidence from Najin, that they managed just to draft the same composition again. It's it's admirable. It may be foolish, but it is admirable. <laughs> and I think you definitely go with the victor here. I mean, Coco was so good. Why would you not pick the champion you just got MVP on in game number one? Yeah, he got the ganks with yeah. Ambition. Ambition's going to be able to pull off those same kind of angles that he had with, uh, with Gragas with this Rek'Sai instead. But again, they do have less disruption to deal with Cassiopeia and Vayne. That Gragas really was important. Of course, they're still going to be able to kite with the Sivir ult. Uh, Mad Life's going to be there to target down Goonger, Goonger OQ with the depth charge. So th a lot of the strength remains, but th gonna, it is a slightly worse version. I was going to say, you can you can make an argument for the Azir to provide the disruption that Gragas you know, is not going to provide this game, but Definitely. I think the Coco is still fine. You can still, or the, the Victor rather, you can still zone with Gravity Field. You can do all sorts of fun stuff. So we will see. So my, as we see these exact same compositions by both teams, with the exception of the jungler, let's talk about how they differentiate. So again, CJ, Rek'Sai is secondary engage. Gragas is going to be that primary engage. So this time, they're going to be a lot more reliant on Shy to actually get those engages, as opposed to Ambition with the cask. Now, Najin, they are actually going to be better off. This is a better composition than they had last time, because now they have two flank champions onto Victor. They have Evelyn and Duke uh, on the Hecarim. So both of them are going to be able to engage. So while they may not have that same ganking power early, I think Najin has really, by changing to Evelyn, really rounded out their late game power, whereas CJ is going to be a little bit weaker in some of these team fights. So I actually think that Najin's composition is a little bit stronger than CJ's. Uh, this game, at least, we compare it to nearly the same compositions in the last one. Well, it'll be interesting, too. Well, uh, Ambition is going to need to really make use of that Tremor Sense to kind of keep track of where Watch is going, and at least CJ does have that. We'll see if it's enough to get them the 2-0. It's time to get in the game and find out. It is time. CJ Entis versus Najin the Empire. The fans are pumped up. I am hyped as well. It was a good game. The it last was. one. It was a great game. It was one of one of my favorite games of the season. Oh no, Barry. <laughs> Barry, no. Don't don't bring those memes in here. It's too get late. Your, get your memes out of here, Barry. <laughs> oh no. Only we can provide the dank memes, Monty. <laughs> We'll let him have that one. Yeah. It's all right. I don't want that one. That one sucks anyway. <laughs>
Uh, it's so much. It's so much sweeter when you know he can hear every <laughs> word. <laughs> He's nodding. He knows. So CJ getting some pretty deep wards, and to kind of keep an eye on things. Do you think this is a situation they'd want to lane swap? We didn't see it in game one. Oki's very good at laning with Vayne, and Alistair Vayne is really, really safe uh, as a lane. It's one of Vayne's stronger lanes. It always has been. Uh, you do have that sustain, obviously, going for you constantly. So if you if you happen to get poked, there's a lot of recovery. You won't have to go back to base, and you're very hard to dive. So I really I think that Najin will be fine without that lane swap. It'll be interesting to see because that's a major factor. Are we going to get the one v one lanes again, or will we get uh, the the lane swap for these tops and who can do better out of that situation where it's not such a farm oh. fest early on. Oh boy. Hello, they found Watch. Watch kind of not paying attention, taking a lot of damage. Flash, but Madlife uh -oh. not able to connect. Whoops, that flash was is something he'll wish he had back soon. OQ though decides he wants to take some damage. Wow, they really want to go for this. This is a bit surprising. Yeah. That they're gonna So I think right there when they saw the invade that what happened was Najin assumed there was going to be a lane swap, so basically Najin wanted to start at enemy blue hmm. in that circumstance to try and get an early jungle advantage, but they got surprised when CJ showed up and Watch was just standing in that brush. And he didn't have the proper wards to make sure that there wasn't going to be that, so a bit of an assumption gone awry there. We'll slow him down uh, a little bit. But Oku didn't flash, Madlife did. There's that aspect to it as well. The, the more summoners lost oh, by wow. CJ, actually. Ambition able to really put the hurt on to watch here as he prevents this red buff. Neither of them can really take it, though. That's that's really weird jungling we're seeing this game. Ambition just yeah. took Gromp and then walked into enemy jungle. I thought I think he thought maybe he could have a fight yeah. against Watch, but didn't quite find it. Well, Watch hadn't started red yet. So instead, Watch is going to back off. He's like, screw this. I'm yeah. just going to go to my blue buff. I don't want to tangle with a Rek'Sai this early in the game. That's going to be a smart call. Ambition will just take his red. Watch will get his in the near future as well. Yep, or blue rather. Ambition will take. Meanwhile, Space and Mad Life have really pushed up this bottom lane. They know from Ambition's pathing that uh, Watch is nowhere nearby, so why not shove in and make OQ's life as hard as they can? I'll have to be somewhat careful because they're, they should be concerned that maybe Evelyn went back to red after that little could be. Tussle, and that means that the gank could be coming in, which is why they're pulling back right now. Okay. And just checking out the tri brush a little bit. OQ uh, able to get a little bit more uh, CS than space, actually, during that. Yeah, they were actually were worried. Hmm. So they're going to have to pull back. Obviously, that ward and tri brush not going to be doing too much for CJ. They get the trinket down anyway. You see where Pure is if he decides to wander up that way at the very least. Yeah, OQ and Pure pushing the lane up now in their favor a little bit. But CJ should be pretty safe with that ward and try for now. So Duke has the advantage of the Gromp on blue side this game. I'm wondering how much that's going to affect this matchup because Shy was so dutiful in terms of going down and picking it up and just winning those trades as a result of having the, the damage return on the, drunk, on the Gromp buff that how much of a difference will it make in this matchup if Duke can get it instead, will he be the one applying the pressure this game? What adjustments have these players made to what they learned in the last one? Because I'm pretty sure Duke doesn't have a lot of chances to play against Shivana. It's, interesting. it's an interesting question. It's cool, too, that we get to see you know, these compositions go at each other again. We get kind of a better feel of how they sort of match up, how these teams match up. Indeed. Well. We may be seeing another passive start here. I think that's I'm very afraid. likely. And uh, with Gragas not being played by Ambition, we can't really see the same type of aggressive gank that we saw last game well, as well, too. We could. He could still tunnel over that Raptor pit and get underneath underneath Goong and try and make a play that way. But I think there's a big difference, though, between just getting the knockup and knocking him so far back in the lane, though. Yeah, that is very true. That is very true. We'll see what Ambition decides to do, though. For now, things pretty even across the board, except for Duke having a pretty big CS lead over Shy already up in that top lane. Ambition coming up to try to change all that, though. We'll see if they can get anything out of Duke here. Duke trying to get away. There we go, Ambition coming in with the knockup. No real way to slow down this Hecarim, and 
Duke yeah. will just have to pause for a moment. That's going to be a tough lane for Ambition to gank. There's not really a lot of ways to slow Hecarim down. Well, yeah, Duke just saves his E right there for the yeah. knockup and uses it afterwards. And Shy just doesn't have, the thing about ganking for Shivana lanes, there's just no CC there to follow yep. up on. So she's not really the most dangerous champion to be making plays with. Space has very low mana. He's got to be careful. He should know Evelyn could be flanking right now. Evelyn with the red buff. You're going to flash on this. Yeah, wa Space just walked right past Watch. Oh boy, this is going to oh, be bad. Okay. Space comes up, headbutt pulverized. I don't, think, I don't think Space is getting out of this one. Nope, first blood goes to Watch. Really nicely set up. Oh, stun into a mission there as Goon does the damage, dodging that Chaos Storm, going back in, wants to try to at least make it a trade, can't take out Ambition, and Coco can't quite get it. They get the flash, though. Oh, Ambition Jeez. just so low right <laughs> there. He had about, like, 20 HP left, actually. It was a nice attempt at a turnaround from Goon. Yeah. And he got his flash blown and his ghost blown, but nearly picked up a one for zero in a gank situation by hitting a good petrifying gaze. Nice attempt, but unfortunately for Goong, he couldn't actually finish off that kill. Still doesn't die himself, though, so that's a minor victory in and of itself in that laning phase, but he's going to be vulnerable for any follow-up that Ambition has. Yep. Um, and he did he did have to use his flash because he tried to get that kill. Plenty of action in the mid lane, but surprisingly, only that one kill in bot so far. Well, Space was really not being very smart right there. He uh, did kind of ask for that one, didn't he? Well, Najin knew that Ambition was on the top side of the map because he had just shown in the top side. So why would they be, I mean, why would you walk up that far when you have no idea where the Evelyn is and there's an Alistair in the brush who can either headbutt pull view or just flash Q you. And it looked like Space was really late there on his spell shield. I mean, so. he didn't. He didn't hit it right, so. It's an excellent question. Mechanical misplay, for sure. Yep. Well, Shy's got his uh, Bami Cinder already, doing a little bit more AoE damage in terms of pushing this lane up. Quite a bit. Again, Duke with the the earlier Ninja Tabi. I mean, most of Shivana's damage is magical, so I'm not really understand why he's doing this. There is the, the aspect that Shivana has that twin bite, but I suppose. Even so, that's a little weird. Well, Najin able to get a tiny bit of an early lead. Getting that first blood onto watch certainly helps, you know, but how is he going to use it? Well this is scary too. Oku now is starting to pull out to a really big CS lead as yeah. OQ does have a tendency to do. He's got the Cutlass already. Space went back and fortunately for him was able to afford that BF sword, but very, very dangerous situation for the bottom lane. And Najin wins by snowballing out of the laning phase. That is how they achieve their victories. They play well when they're ahead most of the time these days. So if you let OQ get big, he will just mop up your entire team. Well, if Najin's able to win this game too, I think we're in for a very interesting game three where Relatively the same comps, but a win for each side. Wow, watch on Evelyn going for the Sightstone before the Warrior enchant. And, you know, huh. the going Sightstone after finishing a, a jungle item like Trailblazer before you get the enchant has been pretty common here in Korea these days uh, as it becomes such a war for information. As usual in Korean League of Legends, uh, being more much more macro-focused than most of the other regions. But... Evelyn, you really want that power early. That's when she is strong, when she can get that warrior champ, but instead converting that first blood gold into more and more and more information for his team. This is a very watch thing to do. Absolutely. Are they gonna dive? No, Maybe. just a- I mean, it doesn't look like they have much of an opportunity for it. Just a ward in the lane. So now they're gonna be able to detect Rek'Sai's lane ganks. There's really no way that anyone can gank this bottom lane right oh. now. Hello. Uh, watch gonna see that. Yeah, actually watch coming in. He's gonna go in all space. They are gonna come in. Oki could be in trouble. Oh man, if Mad Life had landed that anchor. But actually that was really worthwhile. Space burned his ultimate. Watch only had to use his ult in flash, and they got Shy's TP. Now they can make a big teleport play, start to get control of this dragon, and Najin can reverse their fortunes from last game that forced them to fight at all those late drags. Oh, OQ gets grabbed. There's the ult as well. Space doing a lot of damage, gets exhausted, and here comes Ambition. OQ in trouble, tumbling away. 
So low health here, Pure left on his own, but he is quite tanky, and it looks like Najin might get out, but this is exactly what they didn't want to happen. This may cost them that early dragon. We'll see how much OQ can heal up. Well, I really wonder why Duke didn't TP. He was under turret. Maybe he was afraid that Shy was just going to Dragon's Descent him. Could be, yeah. Uh, Could Oki's going to try and heal off this minion wave. I'm not sure that CJ can. This is so dangerous. I mean, Duke has TP. Oh, uh, that's right. They're going to try to take the red buff away and maybe get a little bit more vision here as well, too. That shows a lot of confidence in Shy's ability to interrupt that summoner spell. I guess so. That, wow. Those two were two very bold plays, considering that there was a TP advantage in that top side. They were very reliant on Shy doing some work, but Duke not playing cautiously enough. He seems to be happy just dueling with Shy. Shy has to use his ultimate now, so that is going to be. Oh man! Uh, There's well, no way to interrupt the uh, interrupt the the teleport now. Well, watch is low. Doesn't look like Najin's going to contest this one. Nope. They're just going to let it go, and so CJ. Off of that action down in bot lane, able to claim the first dragon. Mm. I mean... Very important for CJ. Najin's still in that same frame of mind that they were last game. We've got this tier. We need to get some more items onto our champions before we can actually fight, before we're at our strongest. That's mm. true. But there's also the fact that they could have that could have been a 5 before had they played it. Yeah, Oki was a little bit hurt. He was taking the Krugs right there, but he does have that lifesteal. And at a certain point, you have to be able to use that. Now, they still have time. They still have time to use this. And now Blade's done. Now Abyssal Scepter is done for Najin. Now is a time to go ahead and try and make a play with this Hecarim. And we will see if they're able to pull something together. Ambition coming right back down to his Wolves. Wow. Already, this game. <laughs> Uh, that was pretty back and forth. I really like the confidence that CJ showed there. Uh, that's kind of walking a razor's edge, but they really did get some good oh, advantages. They find oh. Pure. Pure is on his own. 1v3. OQ can't come up and save him. Watching Goon coming down. Nice zoning by Coco. Can they still take out Pure? Pure going in. Teleport coming down. Duke not stop. This could get dangerous. Goon very low, though. Duke gets stunned by Mad Life. Najin disengaging, they nearly lost Duke. They got the kill onto space, but Shy is going to get a lot of damage onto this tier one. He's actually gonna just take this tier one. Was this worth it to kill space? Absolutely. No, no, to kill space, no. This is great for so. CJ. Yeah. I mean, if we look at that, if he can get that tower in the top side, they use the TP. Shy's TP is almost up. There was no more dragon to take. Well, Shy didn't get that turret. I think he still will. He's pushing as he hard will. as he can. Yeah, he there we go. Very, very right. low. And look. Coco's going to get mid. Yep. Holy cow, that was an amazing bait by CJ. And yeah, Shy trying to make it out. CJ gets that mid lane turret. Beautiful. So two turrets, even if they lose Shy here, it's perfectly fine. He has all. Shy's going to go down. Yep, he's got smite two and didn't quite make it. I thought maybe we'd see the, uh, oh, he didn't have the ability to challenge smite. He didn't have the skirmisher saber yet. Uh, he he just a, bought it now. Uh, just uh, bought it right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He went up and... He went up and used his smite, though, for sure, onto, onto Shy. Uh, no, I mean, Shy didn't smite Duke. That's what uh, I was talking about. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was wondering why he wasn't doing it, because he was about to die. But it's because he didn't have his saber yet. So, So, all right, let's try and unpack a lot of this action that happened. So CJ, they, they fought. And yeah, they lost space. But by baiting out that teleport, they got two tier one turrets. And they still have all of theirs up. No objective was able to be taken by, by Najin right there. So CJ, that was actually a nice net gain yeah. uh, for them. And they do lose Shy. So they lose two people for two turrets. But that's a great trade for CJ, who wants to control the map in the early game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And a lot of the kills, two of them have gone over to watch. So that's not actually very helpful for Najin. Throughout all of this as well, too, uh, Space has had an opportunity to catch up in a big way in terms of CS against OQ, too. OQ is still the lead, but not as much as he had before. And now CJ has the TP advantage because Duke TP'd right as Shy's was about to come up. Yeah. So there's even more playmaking potential now for CJ Entis, depending on how they choose to use it. But I really like the way that CJ's playing around Najin's teleports in this game. Um, whether it's threatening for Shy to, to come in and, and interrupt it, uh, and then therefore playing very aggressively in the enemy's jungle, or trying to start some skirmishes while they have more power than Najin's composition, or while Shy doesn't have that full rage bar for them to bait the teleport in, even if they're going to lose somebody and lose that engagement so they can take objectives. Well, a nice fight. Play. Over the scuttle crab, 
Rift Scuttler. No, Sivir's not anywhere nearby. Other Scuttle Crab. Other Scuttle Crab. They're going to get the pink ward, and CJ setting up for this next dragon. Now, will Duke's... I don't think Duke's teleport's going to be up by this dragon, is it? It's going to be really close, I think. It's going to be really, really close. Yeah. I think it will be. It should be. It's going to be close. And CJ already setting up for that next dragon. I mean, they really accomplished a lot by having that dragon pressure onto Najin in game number one, so... Being able to go up two to one dragons here in game two certainly makes a big difference. And CJ playing your favorite kind of game right now, Monty. Just very objective focus. No kills at all. I was really Just excited. Objectives. I was really <laughs> excited to, to see them sacrifice space for two towers right there. I bet you were. See, I, I got what I wanted to. I got I got some kills. This is fun. You got space dying. Is that your favorite thing, Doa? Well, you know, just anyone really. Except for Mad Life. <laughs> I feel sad when Mad Life dies. Unless it's nobly giving his life to secure more kills. I can see that. Bad life is a bit of a martyr. A bit. All right, so here's a moment of truth. Will Najin go for this right now? They still are a bit lacking in terms of items. Dukes, TP, it looks like it's going to be real close. I, yeah. Very, very close. We'll see. I don't think CJ is going to be there right as Dragon spawns to take this. Big difference between the junglers. Look at the farm that Ambitions managed to achieve compared to Watch. Watch yeah. has been obviously much more active in ganking, but even with those two kills, Ambition with a lot more money in the jungle right now. Looks like this Dragon might come up slightly before Duke's TP, so this is actually a pretty big deal here. If CJ starts it right away and Shy comes down, Duke could be late to the fight. Yep, Dragon up. And Duke's, looks like Duke's TP will be up yeah. by the time anything actually happens, yeah. So you're five, ten second difference, so yeah. it should it's make. It's up now, or now. I mean now, now, <laughs> now it's up. Okay, there we go. You Let's know, you could just wait for it instead of trying to preempt it. I think it's more exciting if I try to preempt it. It's a game for you, predicting when the teleport will be up. It's such a fun game. <laughs> Is that the best part of play-by-play -play casting, Go. No, it's not. It's, is, is the it's best, a part. Is the best part talking about Star Wars? Yes, that's the best <laughs> part. You got it. <laughs> Najin zoned out of this dragon for now. Mm. Well, they they have every advantage right here. They have the the control over the mid lane. They're stronger at this point in time. Uh, Shy has his ultimate available, and he's doing really well in terms of items. But this is again CJ just. Very methodically putting on pressure like they did on the last Ooh. one, seeing how much they can take out of this situation. Space is going to walk into the bottom side, try and push that right now. Only watch in the bottom to push it. OQ's not there. They I just they take this tower. Turret. Yep, absolutely. Great call from CJ. <laughs> yeah, they're like, all right, we'll just take it. Ooh, all actually, they're going to disengage. Here comes the teleport for Shy. They're going to catch him. Duke, Madlife trying to disengage. Can Duke get on? No. Nice stun, actually. They had to use the... Oh, no, they didn't use the ultimate. Okay. Najin right oh. there. What happened was Duke came in, but Madlife used the Riptide to slow him right as he came yeah. in. So that TP was just nullified right there. I mean, Shy had a TP in as well, but that <laughs> Shy got it with Smite. What Very a great nice. series from Shy tonight. And Coco has that lane pushed up now. CJ with all the pressure, Najin starts this dragon. But the other dragon on CJ is looking pretty threatening. They catch Kung with the ultimate from Nautilus. Coco exhausted, but he's untouched so far. Shy very, very low. Oku with the kill here, and Oku could make something big happen. Duke is a big front line, is helping out quite a bit. Oku helps Duke pick up that double kill. Now Ambition in trouble. There's the scrying lens to spot him. Flash over the wall from Oku. Ambition getting under turret. Oh boy, Ambition gets a knock up on Depure. Looks like he might be able to secure the kill. He does get one before going down, but Najin able to find the fight they want, and they can go back and take this dragon if they'd like to. Uh, Coco somehow getting out of that fight with nearly full HP. So, that was I mean, bizarre, yeah. in that fight right there, so much of this game is decided be be uh, between whether Duke or Shy dies first. Because the follow up is really there. If Shy goes down, then. Coco, or then Goong and Oku can really just tear through the enemy team by using 
the additional speed that they get on some of these single targets. So Goom, it's a great, great combo for Mad Life right there to get Goom. Look at Space just autoing over the wall. Oh, wow. Space has no mana, though, is part of the issue. And Shy comes in, but he's just not tanky enough right now to deal with OQ in that situation. So OQ able just to move up. And Coco finds himself separated from Space right there. And he doesn't close the choke point with the gravity field or his ultimate. Well, despite... Uh, I Despite Goon getting completely caught at the beginning of that fight, he was able to get a split second to actually ult Shy, and then Shy just sat there getting autoed by OQ, and that's how he ended up losing the vast majority of his health. So Goon kind of saving the day with that one. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So OQ and Goon looking a little bit better in these team fights than they were in the last game. It's seven to one in kills, but only 300 gold difference hmm. when it comes to the actual gold advantage here. And that's a result of an additional tower, but a lot of that is the jungle farm. Honestly, 47 to 90 is a really big difference in terms of farm ambition. Doing better, and he's gonna try and get Watch right here. Yeah, Watch engages that red buff. Ambition doing a lot of damage to him, scares him away from it. Ambition, there's a ward there now to stop him. Everybody on Ajin's there though. Ambition knows this. Yeah. They're still gonna try and contest it. A bit dangerous. They couldn't take it away. That's actually huge. They can't give that to OQ. Uh, and that's one of the main tools he's going to use oh, to about to kite shy. So now the gold swings back into CJ's favor. They really need this because, again, Najin is so scary in the late game. And they're much scarier this game than they were last time. That Evelyn is a big, big upgrade in terms of their ability to deal with Coco's Victor. Yeah. And the fact that they didn't have a way to deal with Victor last time was one of the main reasons why they had so much trouble in the team fights, Coco was left to do a lot of damage from the periphery all on his own. But with two flanks coming in instead of one, Victor could get boxed in. Well, looks like they'll get the Rift Scuttler down in bot anyway. Anjan able to control a little bit of the map. And can they take this mid lane turret? CJ is still three to one in turrets, having all three outers down. Only bot lane taken by Najin quite yet. Najin having a problem double warding tonight. Mm. That is sloppy. Yeah, a little bit. The more the merrier, right? <laughs> the more wards. It's just a ward party on the mid lane. I guess so. You can't see the ward party with the naked eye, but it's there, trust me. That's right. The unseen party is the deadliest. Uh, what kind of parties do you go to, Doa? I don't know. I can't see them, so <laughs> I can't really answer that question. <laughs> But you're not dead. No. Uh, that's another reason why I can't answer those questions. <laughs> Haven't experienced those parties. Word on the street. That's all I can deliver. All right. You know? That's what we look for you, to you for, just having your ear on the ground, the pulse of the streets. That's right. That's your nickname. Pulse on the streets? Yep. That sounds like a rapper name. <laughs> you can do that. Sure. You're really going all in on the your rapping career tonight. A little bit. I'm feeling I'm, kind of, I'm feeling the direction <laughs> that my life is going and it's it's pointing me towards hip hop. I knew this day would come eventually. <laughs> did you? I did. <laughs> what was your first sign? <laughs> what was the first sign that I was destined for a life of a, a famous hip hop artist? Uh, digressions into rhyming on cast. Oh, okay. That's that's a good one. That's actually a good one. Wow, you were watching. It. Okay. I believe you now. <laughs> yeah, okay. Wow, it was always meant to be. Who knew? What an exciting time. <laughs> an exciting time to be alive here. I guess I'll still cast League of Legends for a while yet. I'll be more impressed if you could rap League of Legends. But, well... We'll uh, we'll let you release that on your new uh, YouTube single. I'll rap the lore. <laughs> it's a please, great idea. Please don't rap the lore. It's a great idea. <laughs> lore raps with Doa. Rapping the lore. We get Chobra back to beatbox for you. Oh, dude. Sick. <laughs> the difference is Chobra is actually good at beatboxing. Yeah, that's true. Yes, <laughs> I won't deny that. I've just always been afraid to unleash my true rap skills. <laughs> I, You're, the world was not ready for your flow. That's mainly mainly <laughs> my concern, yeah. My flow is just too dangerous, you know, <laughs> frankly. It's too, it's too risky. I can't do that. 
to the internet and the human race. <laughs> We're all glad that you're preventing us from the massacre that would be listening to your rapping. I'll drop the mic and the whole earth would shake, <laughs> man. <laughs> wouldn't be, wouldn't be a uh, safe thing for anyone. Well, we are about to see this dragon fight eventually as both the teams square off for the last couple of minutes. <laughs> yep. Duke and Shy, the endless war in the top lane. I love the fact that we got this matchup two times in a row. It's hilarious. This time, Me though, too. Duke doing a little bit better with his four zero and one kills on this Hecarim, and that's just enormous for dealing with Coco. Yeah, I still do love Shy's Shivana, though. All right, Naj in a position to take this dragon. Looks like CJ's just going to let him have it. Yep. Where are the objectives? Ping goes down from Naj, and they want to make sure that CJ's not taking Baron, but CJ not making any moves towards it. Looks like CJ's got him a little bit fooled, though. Yeah, now there's no up. wards no. on this objective for Naj. They have to be really worried that CJ's actually doing it right now. They could set up a fight here. That's what Coco's trying to do. Gravity field. Oh, couldn't catch Duke. I feel like that was a bit preemptive. I think it was too. I think they really could have baited them in just a little bit yeah, harder. They could have had a good fight there. And now they don't have a way to defend their mid lane turret. They actually cut themselves oh. off right there. That's kind of awkward. Shy coming down. Yep, but they're going to lose the mid lane turret. And Najin, the gold's still pretty even, but they've got uh, a little bit of an edge in terms of pushing for the moment anyway. Shy, though, starting that scary split push up in top lane. Just not going to be quite as effective this game as it was last time. I mean, Duke already has both resist items up, and he has the Cinder Hulk as well. So he, yeah. the Shy's still struggling to finish off the Thorn Mail in this game, although that may, that may turn the tides a little bit. Could be. Duke needs to start looking at more damage next for his next item. I think that he has plenty of tankiness right now just go ahead and go for that trinity force as a fourth item did you miss the fact that he has two swords already doesn't need more swords does he not really he's only That's got okay. two arms he can he can sell the uh, the door plane i'll let him do that it's true that one's not such a good sword well blue buff taken by goom of course cj really starting to Put a bit of pressure on the Baron as well, too, trying to gain some of that vision uh, as they push the lanes up. What Najin should be doing right now is just controlling everything around that Baron because CJ has to be worried that Najin's going to do it incredibly quickly like they did last game with the Cassiopeia in the vein. It is such a massive threat to CJ, and I think that Najin could really bait out a lot of the, the vein 1v1s or the vein skirmishes that they want uh, around this Baron. So why not just go for it right now. You can see the wards starting to move forward for Najin. It looks like they want control over that. They've been busy clearing out their own jungle with the sweeping lenses right now. So they are pushing forward. They need to get this top lane tower down. Oh, Q's trying as hard as he can. He's got that 2v1 against Madlife in space, and Madlife should provide enough CC. Oh, big hit, so here comes Pure. And there's such a big difference this game. Between the item breakpoints and the item timings, where CJ had that advantage, remember how Shy had the Thorn Mail before OQ could finish the Last Whisper in the, in the last game? Well, this time, it's the opposite. Last Whisper's already done for OQ. Shy's still getting that Thorn Mail, so now that the balance of power in these team fights has really changed substantially. Thorn Mail done now, but the point is the Last Whisper will actually be done for the next fight, which is going to be big when Shy absolutely has to chase OQ out or OQ cleans up. Very true. CJ just holding on for now. And I feel like this is kind of CJ's thing where they're like, all right, we need to find that perfect team fight. Well, they better hope they find it soon. <laughs> yeah. I don't think CJ knows that they're actually even in gold. I think that they see the fact that they're only a turret up and it's seven to one kills. And I think CJ actually believes they're more behind than they are because it is surprising that they have been able to keep up this, this much already. Now we're gonna see a war for the Krugs in the bottom lane. You know, the interesting thing though is that, I mean, 
both teams look just very hesitant right now to commit to anything serious. Well, if you're Najin, why would you why would you care about committing to anything serious right now? You have a dragon advantage at 30 minutes. You're looking at your composition. You're saying, Hell, we've got this. Six item late game, yes, absolutely. This is where we want to be. Duke is going to be able to carry harder on Hecarim. Uh, we have the Vayne, we have the Cassiopeia. Of course, Victor great in the late game, but just pound for pound, Najin's composition is just going to be more dangerous. Think about Watch as well. Watch still has that invisibility late. His, if he opens up with his ultimate, that percent HP is going to be absolutely huge. Rek'Sai is just nowhere near as impactful unless you have like a Baron and you're going to be split pushing with the Rek'Sai to close out the game. Then that Void Rush comes into play. But for the most part, Rek'Sai without being a champion without an ultimate is not particularly useful. So how do you take the advantage back then, CJ? Do you just try to find that perfect team fight if Najin's a little bit out of position? Yeah. Do you try to sneak a Baron? Uh, go for a pick, really. I mean, try and find somebody alone. You have Sivir. You have the, the lockdown with the Nautilus ultimate. Maybe you can make something work. But this game, I think, much more Najin's speed. Uh, they're, they're approaching the late game here with an e with evenly, as opposed to last game, where they found themselves in that 5, 6k gold advantage, which allowed CJ to fight on that more even footing. This time, it's definitely trending in favor of Najin. And it's so fun to see this, because seeing the same compositions almost in both games really lets us see a lot of the details about how they operate, what changes these junglers made. They're going to try and go for this pick with the Sivir. That's going to be tough, though. Duke just running away. Here comes Madlife, though. He's going to slow Duke down. There's a nice hook. There's a knockup from the ultimate Coco coming in. Looks like they found their pick. There goes Duke. Can they turn this into a Baron, though? Shy ready to teleport in if they need him to. Ooh. I think you got a Baron here, right? Well, they're going to start it. And Coco, Ooh, okay. it's going to be go. a 5v4. There's not a lot of AP damage. Yep, Shy already in there. They're going to turn it around. The poke is real from Najin. Baron getting a bit low. Space extremely low. Watch uses his ultimate. They're going to turn around. There's a the silver ultimate. They're going in onto OQ. Shy all over the AD carry. Kung zoned out. OQ still able to get a lot of auto attacks off. And Najin is turning this one around in a big way. CJ needs to be careful. Low health. There we go. A kill for space. Coco flashes for the one against OQ. OQ barely makes it out of there. But the advantage does go to CJ in the fight. They can't do the Baron, though. That's right. At least Najin saved the Baron. They're going to actually maybe get oh, this man. Dragon as well. That's huge. Void Rush coming in. Can they get there in time? Oki's going to be healing a lot off this Dragon. Coco's still at nearly full HP. How yeah. fast can they do it? Oh, Ooh. Dragon getting very, very low. Can okay. they make something happen? No, OQ gets it. They're going to come in, though. There's a kill for Duke. Coco immediately. Duke all over Coco, though. And Watch just running out of the fight. OQ can tumble all day, man. A kill for Duke and CJ in big trouble here. Shy trying to get in on the AD carry. There's a challenging smite. Condemn comes in. Shy still chasing OQ. Looks like they might be able to get him. Looks like they will. Nice grab by Mad Life. So CJ able to take a few kills for that. Two for two, actually two for one there. Yep. Uh, OQ dies, but Duke is able to clean up Ambition and Coco, and they get the Dragon, and they are going to push the wave off this turret right now. Well, CJ Very coming down close. to take a tier two tower. Yeah, they're going to just kind of try and fly in on the watch and just push, push, push while they can. It. Okay, this turned out okay for CJ. They got a turret. This game is so even. No, I love kidding. the adaptations and shot calling that we're seeing. It was a good idea for CJ to go for that Baron. And like I said, that is the play they had to make. They wanted to kill somebody with the Sivir ultimate and get the pick. They get the pick onto Duke. Unfortunately for them, Najin actually barely is able to contest this this Baron right now. We can see that watch coming in. There's going to be the lead or the orb onto the dragon by Oku so they can see it. And then a lot of kiting. OQ just doing work on the Shy right here. Watch trying to help out, burn him down. Ambition has to flash out in the end. Pure headbutting people back, but it's mission accomplished, right? They yep. actually are able to get everyone low enough. OQ, ooh, that is a beautiful flash tumble to get out of range of Coco. So close, man. If OQ had gone down, that almost certainly would have been a Baron. CJ does lose their top turret after all is said and done. Still ahead by one, though. Gold just dead even in this game, though. This series has been so fun to watch. Yeah. It's been well played by both sides and very competitive. Very even up. But the dragon advantage may tip things. Dragon yep. really did 
uh, determine our winner in the last game because it allowed CJ to choose when the fights were executed. And with three dragons already taken by Najin, it could very well do the same thing again. CJ trying to set up a bit of a pick here. Najin doesn't know this is coming. Pure getting very close. They have orb. Uh, they, they used it on Baron, I believe. No, they, oh. they have it up. But oh, they, there's a ward there, yeah. yeah. Evelyn snuck in and put the ward down. They're going to go for it. Wow, yeah, they are going to start it. I don't know about it. this one. This is dangerous, man. Najin coming back in. CJ feeling a bit desperate. That Baron getting very low very fast. Duke could come into the pit, though. They're going to turn on an Ambition very low, though. Shy gets in the back lines. He's on his own, though. OQ finds him. Nice knockup. Shy tries to escape back to his team. And Najin already winning this fight, pushing CJ back from that Baron once again. And now that Tier 2 should be pretty easily taken by Najin. Yeah, they could just rush mid right now, which yeah. is absolutely what they should do. Can Najin delay any recalls? They could turn right back onto Baron, too, if they want to. They could do it so fast once the recalls come in. Pure just actually tanking that tower. Tier 2 taken. Works out. Oh, CJ. Might want to turn this one back around. Ambition coming right back. Shy. Jumping into things as well. Oh, they didn't see the ward right there, but they're in the brush, so it's not going to matter the most. This game is so close. <laughs> really fun game. Still so close. Turrets even now. Again, like you mentioned, the dragon's still a big deal. Another big deal is Najin needs to go back and buy. They haven't bought for a long time. 2,000 gold apiece on Goong and OQ right now. That's a lot of power just sitting there not being used. So CJ really having a much having a, a gold advantage because yes. some of it just hasn't been spent by Najin yet. Especially on their carries. Yes. Yeah, especially on those carries. That's huge. Now so they get to go back. The F sword picked up, and they're going to have to just recall one by one. Fortunately, Najin gets the advantage in the vision before that happens. Shy has to deal with a big wave in the top side, and his TP isn't up quite yet. So they actually get free recalls just based on that TP timer right there. Nice break by Najin to be able to do that. Coco just pushing back Ooh, the lane. Oh, Deathcap actually completed right there for Goong. That is a big, big buy. He's got his Void Staff as well, too. He is going to be doing a lot of damage. Coco this game going for that Lich Bane build. We've seen him with the Lich Bane for quite some time already this game, but he does need more kiting and more speed this time around that he has to deal with two flankers instead of just one. Sure. And Trinity Force done for Duke. Duke is massive. Duke is six item Hecker, and this is really, really scary. Now, Shai's got a long time until he finishes that Trinity Force. Looks like he's going for one. Dragging up in a minute 15, and now we're kind of in the reverse situation from last game where Najin is poised to take that fourth dragon. He should be quite happy with how things are going. We're at the point already, though, where really the next team that wins a big team fight should take the game. Yes. Absolutely. Oh, Duke trying to come in. Nice ultimate from Watch. Watch getting away in the backside space. Backing away. Duke finds him. Coco able to get out with the speed, though. Can CJ turn this around? Oh, OQ barely dodging the laser, actually, with that tumble. Najin on the run a little bit here. They yeah. tried for the engage. They couldn't get it. That may cost them this fourth dragon. So many ults used on the side of CJ, however. Will Watch be able to get back in time? Looks like he's going to start recalling right now, and then that's when they're going to make their play. Coco's got his up, though, Yeah. the moment. Duke used two. Duke and uh, Watch used two, but CJ, they had to use two as well, but they took all. Whoa, Shy gets caught, gets taken down, and they're going to catch Mad Life as well. What a turnaround for Najin. That's Baron, that's Dragon. That could be the game right there. Yeah, well, it's definitely going to be a massive advantage. They're just going to go for the Baron right away. And they're also, Ambition wants to get onto that Dragon. Yeah, no one dragon. actually going to be able to go over there. Duke is trying to make his way over, but he encounters Coco in the mid. And he can't get past the gravity field, so, so he's going to have to abandon his attempt. So CJ will prevent that fourth Dragon, but now they are on defense for the foreseeable future as this Baron buff is going to make Najin very scary. Those tier twos are in some pretty serious jeopardy right now. Well, look at CJ. Even though they gave up the pick, and we see Shy right here. Uh, how did he actually get? Oh, condemned. I don't know. Well, he got so far got forward, slowed, So, and Mad Life actually got hit by the petrifying gaze. Ugh. Dead on for the stun. Now the nice thing for CJ is, and they've been able to keep all the lanes fairly pushed here. So, how much is Najin really going to be able to gain from this Baron buff? I mean, they're going to start pushing up. Uh, they probably can get the remaining tier twos. I wouldn't put more than that. But CJ, they at least got a red buff. They took all they could, given the circumstances. Very yeah. decisive shot calling afterwards. And that, that's going to set Najin yet another six minutes back on a possible 
fifth dragon stack. Well, they knew what they needed to do to stay alive in the game, and CJ does it. They've got decent wave clear, too. Very good wave clear, in fact. Yeah, they have much better wave clear than Najin, so maybe they can actually save more it and seems save like some of their tier two turrets. Najin just hasn't been there in terms of the side wave control this game. It's taking so long for Najin to even get their minions to the point where they're threatening the turrets. It's just, it seems like it's just not gonna happen in bot lane for a while. Top lane handled fairly easily. Mid lane, the tier two is already gone, so CJ can defend it easily from the base. 50% of the buff gone right there. Oh, uh -oh. Ambition. Uh -oh. oh boy, Ambition. Do you have your ult up? Yeah, you do. You, you gotta get to another tunnel, but there are no other tunnels. None nearby that help, really. Oh boy. Well, Ambition gets picked. Watch using his ult on that one, though. Oh boy. That's 60 seconds that CJ is in the 4v5 Ambition, understandably disappointed <laughs> with himself, man. That was just I a bit sloppy. To, I needed to farm Gromp right then, guys. Yeah, seriously. Come on. You don't need to go for the Gromp that badly. We talk a lot about going for the Gromp, and we oh. endorse going for the Gromp, but there are limits, Noah. There are limits. That's right. That's gonna. That's a Gromp that's going to cost CJ a tier two. Maybe more. Shy trying to defend this tier two in top lane. And Coco in space should be able to push the minions back, although that cannon minion, very annoying. One of, the, one of the main rules of going for the Gromp is that, you know, it's great, everyone's happy, all your friends are happy if you get the grub. Uh-oh, uh, Space oh, just going to pop his ult for no reason, just try and clear this out. I guess so, they're still going to lose that turret. Oh, very, very low. Meanwhile, the tier two and top goes down. Najin slowly grinding away at CJ's base now. This Baron buff starting to work out. Yeah, there goes bot turret. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, CJ may be a little bit too far behind here. I think that may be the case, OQ. Starting to open up on that inhibitor right now. They have to get pretty close to it though. The poke from CJ still coming in. Well, Shy ready to try to come in. And the inhibitor getting very, very low. Watch, trying to make something happen. They're gonna try to finish it off. Watch getting low, Mad Life knocked up. Inhibitor still alive. Zoning, no gravity field for a little while. There goes the inhibitor. Oh boy, CJ can't defend it. Yeah, I think this one may be drawing to a close here. It looks like a game three is incoming unless CJ can win a pretty massive team fight. If they can win a big team fight, they can just bulldoze down the lane and win it. They've got that minute plus death timer. We're at that point in the game. And they have the Sivir speed buff to get there faster. And they yeah. have a Lich Bane also with very tanky front lines. So yeah, they could certainly, they don't even need a minion wave. They could just walk into right. Najin's base for sure. So I, I was about to say, Dar, you know, it's great. Everybody's happy if you get the Gromp, uh -huh. your teammates, you know, but when you actually hurt your bros by going for the Gromp too hard. That's when it's not okay. That's right. That's you the don't want to that's, lose. That's the rule of going for the Gromp. Bros be for throws, man. <laughs> it's very true. Bros before throws. Got to be well, careful. Well put. <laughs> so CJ able to get a little bit of this side wave control. A little bit back. Things are still not looking good. CJ needs to be like the ultimate CJ and find that miracle fight. I think it may be a little bit too late for miracles. I think so too. I mean, Oku has the veil now too. That's going to be enormously helpful in dealing with not only uh, Shy's damage, but the fact that he tends to get targeted by the depth charge and team fights because that means they have to pop it before Mad Life actually has a good opportunity to ult him. Yep. At Banshee's Veil for Oku, too. He's in such good shape. Yeah, yeah. That is it's a big pickup. Yep. Watch as well. Let's watch just kind of walk in and ult whoever he wants. So, a big part of these team fights for CJ has been making sure that either OQ or Goon gets Ooh. zoned out by the Nautilus ultimate. But now with Zonia's and with Veil, that is much harder. Goon Man took a big chunk. Well, Coco's still doing a lot of damage here. Yes, he is. That is Victor for you. Yep. So again, you know, imagine that happening while getting ulted by Mad Life. You know, Goon could easily go down. If they lose Goon, they just, it's unlikely that they'd have the damage to win a fight. Unless OQ has a pretty amazing mechanical play. So the downside to CJ taking that dragon at the same time that Najin was taking the Baron is yes, it delayed it, but now the timers have been offset so that Najin can safely just go to dragon and then follow up with the Baron afterwards without having to make that trade again. That's a good point. 
CJ has the has the angle though. They're gonna get the crab. So CJ really wants this dragon, and who can blame Ooh, them? They're Najin. starting it. They can take it very quickly. Najin not looking for the flank though. They're Here just gonna go. walk in front. He's got that Banshee's Veil. He drops the ult a little bit early. Goom looking for a good ultimate. Doesn't find it. Dragon at about half health right now. Gravity field down for a couple seconds. Dragon very, very low. We'll see who's able to take it. Shy looking for an angle. Dragon gets taken by Najin. They get their fourth here in the back lines. Now Space trying to do what he can, but Najin just pushing CJ back. Shy activates his ultimate, doesn't get in on anybody. But look at this. CJ, uh, they are just zoned out here. Turning around now, OQ able to get the kill into Shy. Knock up onto Space and Coco at the same time. And now Najin trying to win this fight. OQ a bit low, but there it goes, Space. Duke getting the kill against Coco. Ambition barely survives, but it might as well be an ace. That is the end of the game. Najin comes back with the more or less the same comp. Wins game two. <laughs> wow. Yeah, exactly. We see both of these teams coming back with compositions. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what Ambition wanted to find back at home, waiting <laughs> for him. It's supposed to be safe, but no, that is nothing, nothing safe about the base now for CJ and Najin with an extremely well played game two, able to tie up this series, GG. Yeah, this series has been really fun to watch so far. I love the yeah. fact that we got to see subtle, subtle variations on those compositions that we saw in game one. Come back this time around, Najin pulls it together, they get that big lead in the laning phase, and they're able to close it out with better team fighting, a little bit better flanking here, as well as improved control of the dragon. So, are we gonna see the same thing in game three? That is Remains a big, to be big seen, question. Man. Remains to be seen. I, I love Duke's confidence. He gets crushed by Shy in game one, says, nope, I'm taking the same matchup again, and I'm gonna win this time. Really delivers nine, one, and four. Yeah. at the end of the game. I think that's another MVP performance coming in from a top laner in this series. Victory we'll see as we move into picks and bands for the final game of the night here between CJ Antis and Najini Empire. And the Vayne band. No! Smart, <laughs> smart, but sad. Well, Najin's made a habit of either picking or getting Vayne ban banned against them this season, and it will happen once again for them here. Callista. We take it out for Najin, so 80 carry bans. The name of the game so far. Van Bane was the name of my werewolf alter ego. How did you know? <laughs> Van Bane. <laughs> well, let's see what the second ban is for CJ. Were you also a Count of Bavaria? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> exactly. I've been around a while. Rek'Sai banned against Watch, so CJ, I think they're going to look for a Gragas first pick here. It's Kind of looking that way. Maokai Van. A lot of respect for Shai's Maokai. Again, he is really good on tanks and very disruptive to the back line. And of course, oh, Maokai being a power pick, and apparently Duke's just going to pick Hecarim into anything tonight. You know, I feel like the Gragas pick for game number one for CJ really did make a big difference in terms of the presence Shai was, or ambition rather, was able to have in the early game. And I just, I would be so shocked if they weren't going for a Gragas first pick here. Well, the question is, do you ban Gragas? That's what I was wondering, Or yeah. do you ban uh, the Rumble, which oh, Najin's yeah. banned in every game so far, and their first game bans when they were on the red side were Kalista, Maokai, Rumble, and it will be the Gragas instead. So they're going to huh. perhaps play with fire here, but they could just take Rumble. Again, Duke no slouch on that champion. I was going to say, is Shy's Rumble good enough? But I suppose Duke's Rumble is good enough that Shy might as well take it. Well, what does CJ want? Do they want the Alistair now that that's available to them, or do they want the Rumble? They're, they want the Rumble. They're giving up Alistar Sivir here, which is a, a pretty risky thing. If if they pick it. If OQ takes yeah, Sivir. That's, that's the thing. That is always the question. Is this actually the pick that they want? Because Najin, not the biggest Sivir team in the universe, but we could see just taking away that champion. That is what we're going to see. I think it's wise. Uh, now, it does put Najin in an interesting position. OQ traditionally has not performed as well when he can't be in that sort of playmaking AD carry role. So we'll see. This, this could set Najin to a bit of a disadvantage. Let's see what CJ has in response here. But at the same time, they are going to have a more powerful mid game than they have in the last couple. So that should be a bit interesting. They can play a pick comp like this as well. If Guggen wants to go on an assassin now, remember that when CJ was on the blue side in game one, they banned the Zed and they banned the Riven. I don't even know why they banned the Riven. Oh, uh, I, 
there must be something that Najin does, but there's a lot of counterpick potential now, and that's the thing that's going to be churning through CJ's mind, because we've seen Goom go off playing Zed after the Zed nerfs against Victor. Yep. Does CJ want to take that risk? Goon has shown that he has no problems playing Zed into Victor. Oh, I was hoping we would get to see Ambitions Nunu. I think that would have been a great pick. But going with the Evelyn instead, which is a bit interesting for Ambition. I don't know. I don't know about that. I think they're just trying to take away Watch's champions. I mean, it, it certainly does look that way, but... But Ambitions Nunu is so good. Because what does Watch do now? Does he, does, he go for the, does he go for the Nunu? Nocturne is, is being played in LPL earlier today. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, it's well, it's always been kind of around in China, right? But Watch was, uh, you know, he's played a lot of Nocturne in the past. I would imagine, though, it's probably going to be the Sejuani, which is still available. But that's going to slow down Najin's mid game, right? Do they yeah. really want to go for that? Uh, Watch will play Lee Sin. That's true, too. That's a good point. Lee Sin's an option. Nar. And are we going to see Duke on this Nar? It would give him a bit of an edge over Shy and Lane. And yeah, there's that Lee Sin for Watch. This is a really good setup for an Assassin. Mm. I'm very curious to see what Coco is going to blind pick. LeBlanc is available. LeBlanc would be a very safe blind pick for Coco. Yeah. But maybe they want to set up some Siege. However, if he takes his like trademark Jace here with Janna, it could be Jace Janna. It really could be. But that... That could be dangerous against some of the assassins that Goon likes to play. But at the same time, it's a composition that CJ is very comfortable with. Right. What about like a Cassidy in here? You can't blind pick Cassidy. All right. You'll get Zedded. <laughs> Zedded. I don't think we're going to see Swain. Then again, the other day I said I don't think we're going to see Lee Sin. Is it going to be the double AD with Varus? That would be interesting. Yeah, go for the Varus instead of the Jace. Similar similar concept. Wow, so CJ going to blind pick themselves a mid-game poke composition. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. But Najin, they've got great late game team fighting with this NAR. Good tankiness, Alistair NAR already locked in. LeBlanc. Huh. Okay. Najin's comp is looking pretty scary. I don't know about this, Doha. I don't know. I, I think I think that CJ should have taken the little block. Yeah, I'm a bit worried about CJ here. I mean, Najin just has so many ways to engage on the poke, you know? They've got a great team fight. They've got great pick. Yeah. Uh, good speed. Uh, good early game pressure as well. I think... Of course, they have the favorable matchup of the, the Sivir into the Corky. They have the LeBlanc to kind of abuse the relatively less mobile Varus pick in the mid lane. Now, CJ does have a very strong mid game. Really, really strong. So if they can push out then, if they can get that Siege, Najin will have trouble. There's but a lot of... It's got to be tough There's because they don't have any winning lanes. Yeah. There's it, a lot of ifs on CJ. Like, if Mad Life can get the peel, get the disengage he needs to, if Coco can land the chains on Goong when he comes in. A lot of this game know. may depend on whether CJ can successfully lane swap because they don't want to play Rumble into Nar yeah. and they don't want to play Corky Janna into Sivir Alistar. There's too much kill pressure in those, all those lanes. Well, Najin knows this is coming too. And it all comes down to this. CJ Antis versus Najin, game number three. A lot of standings implications riding on this game. And it's been such a good series too, so far. We'll see who takes game three and takes the match. It's time. Let's see what happens. All right. CJ Entis with double AD poke versus Najin the Empire. And they're engaged, their assassination potential. It's a scary prospect for CJ. Definitely is. But they will look really good if they hit their power spike. As these rumble, various quirky compositions tend to do. It is a good comp. It really is. Um, I don't think it's as good with Evelyn because you don't necessarily have as much appeal uh, for your backline as you would with certain other champions, but I think they just wanted to take it away from Watch. You can see how the Nunu wouldn't have necessarily worked as well with this, too. I oh, mean, no, Nunu would have been great. Even with all the uh, the kind of spell poking? 
Well, yeah, because he has great zone with absolute zero. Nice he suppose. can control True. the jungle early and keep vision so that your like Varus isn't as vulnerable. Mm. I was um, thinking more about the blood boil, I guess. Well, with Varus and Corky, you got 280 carries of blood boil. Take oh. your pick. Will they get close enough? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially at cleanup fights. Well, I guess he should have picked Nunu then. I like Nunu here, but I just think that they don't want Watch to have it. Uh, Watch actually did do a good job of engaging in the last game, and that is that is a concern for them. And they, they do have th – the nice thing is you do have more early game punch, but for the most part here for CJ, it's more about – preventing ganks from happening because they are the ones with the rumble uh you know they're the ones who are going to be having some some trouble maybe protecting that mid lane because Vera's is going to be much more vulnerable to ganks it's and like... actually we are going to get the lane swap in looks like Nacha may have tried to call this but cj so cj gets the lane swap this is pretty pretty good for them shy is in the top side though and if we look right now there is going to be the jungler on that side of the map. So a little bit of danger to Shy, but then again, Duke already in lane. So with both top laners, unless they want to really invest in an early teleport dive. And we will see how good Coco is on this Varus too. It's gonna be interesting. Poking a lot early on, has to pop that mana pot early, but that's just kind of how it goes with Varus early on in lane. Shy getting harassed so much, man. He is not going to get a lot of CS until that pushes towards turret. Ooh, Ambition coming in for a gank. Level 2 gank. And yeah. that forces a flash from Goong, actually, and pops his passive. Now they're going to try the same watch. Much the similar idea in his head. That was good from Ambition, though. He took the Q that Goong was already low and did get a summoner for free. Nice play there. Vertical yeah. jungling from both sides after those moves on the mid lane. Right at level two. Yeah, blue buffs taken by each team on the opposite sides of the map. So who's going to be bold right here? Are we going to see a tower dive? Now, there are pings going down. I think Duke made TP for this. Shy is only level two. I think Duke made TP for this. They're pushing forward. They don't know Watch is there. Watch it. Actually, just going to show in the top. I don't know why Watch is showing. <laughs> uh, Duke going up to top lane right now. Looks like they're going to try to swap things. No, going nope, into they're the fast jungle pushing. now. Oh, okay, okay yeah. so here's the strategy. They don't want to TP for this. They want to deny Shy, and they want to start putting pressure on the turret because they started pushing forward faster. Uh, Corky is just freezing at the moment, and so they're trying to accelerate this game with a better wave clear and control early on. Mad Life. Oh, Vision boy. there as well. Watch comes in. There's a knock up on Mad Life. He's in big trouble. You're trying to get back into the turret. They're going to follow, though. Shy with a great flame spitter. Zones out Najin, though, and Ambition really doing damage with those hate spikes. Wow, Shy is single handedly saving Mad Life right now. Ambition comes back in. Got those double buffs. The hate spikes doing damage. Knock up onto Pure. Pure flashes in for the pulverized first blood. Going over to OQ, though. Exhaust on to Shy. Here end. comes Coco. Ooh, Coco could do a lot of damage here, but now he's on his own. They need to get there. CJ needs to try to save him here. Coco forced to flash over the wall and use that barrier just to survive. Man, I can't believe Najin got everybody out of there. Uh, it was actually pretty well played by both sides because CJ actually managed to sneak under the tower right there in spite of Mad Life getting chunked out early. And Shy did a wonderful job of just blocking them off and dealing a ton of damage with his Flame Spitter in response. Coco with the quick roam. And it looked like he may have been able to get a multi-kill right there, but he's just not strong Close. enough yet. He, like, all he had was a flask. So, unfortunately, he can't follow up on that kill or to get those kills early on. But pure great decisiveness going back in for Ambition on the flash, headbutt, pulverize on and then Coco coming through, but having to flash himself in order to stay alive and use his barrier. But, you know, CJ read the dive very well. Duke tried to make the play. And at the end of the day, only getting one kill for that is, is, a, is actually pretty nice for CJ, that they didn't die more right there because Najin had the angle on the turret and they forced CJ to respond. CJ did a, a much better job in responding than I thought they would as that play started to develop. Works out. And now we've got standard lanes after things are all said and done. Coco just letting the lane hang out closer to his turret, making Goong potentially overextend a little bit more. And what I love about this series tonight, Doa, is that 
we had these questions coming in. Was CJ really like as bad as they looked in the last couple of games, or was it just a, something that they needed to shrug off? Uh, was Najen able to compete at a top level and really deliver strategic games without so much relying on massive laning victories? And would they be able to hang with teams when they're coming off beating just IM, Spenu, and Samsung? And I think the answer to both of these questions is yes. Yeah. Uh, CJ has played really tight games tonight. We saw some great shot calling and team fighting from them. Najin has been able to come out with wins in a close game and adjust better on the fly to use strategies against their opponents. So it's really been a pleasure to watch this series. And yeah, it I really mean, we're is. dead even again. It's well, I mean, we've had the best possible outcome, right? The answer is both of these teams are good. Yeah, both of these teams really. And it's just the top six in Korea is going to be so interesting the later we go in this series because so many of these teams are, are skilled and evenly matched these days in this region. Goon taking quite a beating here early in terms of CS, though, and that's actually why CJ was able to catch up after the first blood. Yeah, Coco doing a really good also, job. Also, OQ. In lane. Because he fast pushed right there and because other people were taking the farm, he actually sacrificed a lot of CS to put damage down, and he got the first blood, but they didn't get the turret. Mm. So going back into the lane right now, and you can see right now, because space was alone, he's also level six, while OQ just now hit level five. So CJ making the most of that freeze, and even though the first blood went down, because CJ's actions were to have this Varus in the mid lane, where he's able to poke Goong out early. Of course, there's danger now of Goong all inning him. Um, and because of C space's ability to freeze while his team kind of brought the, the cost of the freeze down to just that one kill, it ended up being even. Cool game. Yeah, absolutely. And Duke now on the verge of picking up that Hex Drinker, and once he does, Shy might have a little bit tougher of a time in lane here. And Duke already having the CS lead, so Ajin at least getting a bit of an edge in top. Yeah, it's, and that top lane advantage, if we look at how this series has progressed tonight, has really been a big, big difference. Because when Shy had was was in the lead, uh, he was able to really dictate the, the course of the game. And when Duke was in the lead, so was he. And that's that's the power of teleport on the map right now. Uh, I think Coco oh tries to ult Goon. Goon manages to, to uh, distort away. Not sure that was likely to work. Yeah, I don't know. Just uh, walk up and try to ult, I guess. <laughs> it was bold. Not much mana on Coco either. Well, look at this. CJ's deciding that because there's that 7 to 5 advantage until just change the 7 to 6 in the bottom lane, that they're just going to leave space down there and start using their level advantage by taking this blue buff away from Goon. Uh, Watch is on the other side of the map. He's going to go for blue on that side, but it looks like neither mid laner is going to get blue this game. Yeah, Goon going to try and get it hang, uh, handed off, but if Goon gonna gets get this, it. that's going to be really good for him because Coco did not get his. Well, he does. So they do hand it off. Meanwhile, Ambition took the blue on the other side, I believe. We'd have to take a look at that. Yes, he did. Oh, Coco getting some time to get a little bit of a CS lead there. But denying that blue buff against... Uh -oh. oh, Ambition could be in trouble. Watches right there. Ambition ults. Oh. Can he do anything about it, though? Coco... Oh, wow, they he totally caught Ambition. He his flash over the wall, oh. and so couldn't escape that kill. Now, Goong doesn't get it, and that's lucky, because that would put him right back in gold contention. But Watch gets the double buffs refreshed. Again, it's not as bad as it could be. If Goong had double buffs and got that kill, that would have been oh. really bad for Coco. And right there, too, Coco doesn't have the blue buff. It's going to take longer for his tier to stack up now for him to get that Muramana. That's a really important not only buff takeaway, but a kill for Najin. Yeah, very true. Luckily, Ambition is quite far ahead in farm. Still has his enchant, so item-wise, I suppose both junglers are about even. But yeah, you're right. I mean, the big danger was giving more to Goon when he's already doing OK. Well, that assist is going to put him pretty much on par yeah. with uh, with Coco. And this is the dangerous time. This is where Goon really does have kill pressure on the Varus. And obviously, Varus struggles when there's such oh. a, a highly mobile mid laner or assassin against him. Space taking a bit of damage, mitigated by that shield from Mad Life. Oku actually taking a bit too. There's a scrying orb just to kind of keep an eye on Oku. And it's going to be hard for CJ to siege. Uh, 
OQ is playing Sivir, one of the best wave there. Jabby's the game. Uh -oh. Duke going it on to Shy. Nice Here's ult on to Shy. Shy gets smite as well. Kicked back out by the Dragon's Rage. And another nice gank from Najin. Easy kill there. And watch going for the Cinder Hulk again. I mean, I hate it when he does this, but he's making <laughs> the mechanical plays. You got to admit, it's a Soap good gank. Good gank from Watch. And that is going to put Duke in a very good position. Duke didn't even have to flash right there. And this is the this is the problem. We talk about those losing side lanes early on. Space was actually lucky that he got that advantage with the with the freeze, and they only had to pay for it with one kill. But that that is dwindling now. And you can see the power of that Gnar in the top lane against against the Rumble. And there's going to be the arm guard first just to deal with Duke's Hex Drinker. Duke looks like he's going for Warmogs, actually. So just getting the flat HP because there's such mixed damage coming out right now from CJ. It's probably a good plan. Meanwhile, Space and Mad Life push up that bot lane for the moment anyway. Still with that little CS lead. They want to try to set up for a dragon, but Goong is already coming down. Wards for both teams, but I don't think that CJ is going to find that opportunity to take the dragon that they were looking for. No, and they, they just didn't react while they saw Watch in the top lane either to make an aggressive play onto it. Nor can they really. They're still waiting for Coco and, and Space to fully come online here with Trinity Force and with some armor penetration for Coco, so it's going to be a little bit of a wait. Now, that said, it doesn't really matter that CJ's behind 800 gold right now. No. Their power spike is going to be very potent in about five minutes. And if they can win a fight then, they're going to be in really good position. Najin will be very, very lucky if they can somehow sneak a dragon away so that CJ is going to miss part of their timing window. And if they can do that, I think they can actually just get this game to a point where they're going to overwhelm the opposition. CJ is going to be weak late. Oh, action down here. OQ pops his ultimate space. Very vulnerable. Still has his flash and his heal available, though. Watch, trying to come down, but he couldn't quite get there soon enough. Yeah, just force the Sivir ult out. Yep. Yeah, it's a nice play. You don't really have an ult on Corky that has any kind of cooldown, so you'll take that as a victory for sure. OQ going to go back to base right now. Ambition grabbing his red buff. What is Watch going to do here? Probably nothing. They, they He's have too low. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, you can't really try much. Ooh, I don't know. I don't know, man. Oh, yep, they're going to see him. Ambition coming into this with half health. Madlife trying to save his jungler here. Watch a little bit low. Has to escape. Man, that was so close. Space right there, though. Misses him with the rocket here. Space flashes ahead. That may not have been wise. It's knocked back. Piercing Ooh, arrow. About that. Barely missing. Yeah. Do you know why you buy warrior enchant, Doa? So That's that, why uh, you buy warrior enchant. <laughs> drives me nuts. I don't know. You want to you get fancy like that on Lee Sin and try and ambush the Evelyn, then you you buy Warrior Enchant like she does, and you mess <laughs> her up. You just mess her up in her own jungle. Don't make those plays if you've got your crappy Cinder Hulk on Lee Sin. Don't worry. Corky will try to flash auto you to death. <laughs> He'll just, you'll just he uh, didn't safeguard Pure away there. laughing. If Pure wasn't there, then that may have been a bit different. But Oku going to get a lot of free autos on this bottom tower. Yeah, that one's It'd nearly down. Quite helpful for them. Very true. And it looks like the top lane has more or less stabilized. Shy isn't any more behind now than he was a few minutes ago. Here comes Goon. Yeah, he's going to try to steal this blue, it looks like. Nope, a little bit too dangerous. Gets there a, a shade too late yeah. to find that. They know he's there, so he probably can't dive this. Shy going to fall back underneath the tower immediately. Oh, man. Space was so close to Trinity Force on that buy and didn't get it. That really hurts. He's got to yeah, take another seriously. trip. Oh, Mad Life getting poked again. Here comes Watch. Nice whirlwind to prevent the engage. Dodging the Q then. They just want this tower. I think they'll get it too. Yep, they will. I said they will. There we go. All right, so will this lead to a dragon for Najin? Now, you mentioned about sneaking that one earlier. Well, this might be their opportunity. Well, they're going to probably find one. Space is in the unenviable position of having to recall to finish his Trinity Force. And if that happens, then they lose. But if they fight, he's not really in a great position to fight yet. He's missing, going to be missing out on some of the damage without that fully completed item. So he's in, this is a bit of a pickle actually for CJ. That is just, that's such an unfortunate purchase timing for him. 
Yeah. He's going to recall now. Now this, uh, man, if Najin gets this dragon, they're going to be sitting pretty, because. And they are going for it. Oh, watch gets caught though. Nice ultimate from Coco to lock Jeez. that one in. That is exactly what CJ needed. That was a miracle that they actually were able to stall out this dragon right there. Go! Uh oh, Goong over the wall, and he may catch Coco here. Coco pops the barrier. Goong goes in for the kill. Gets slowed though. Here comes Mad Life and Ambition. There's a knockup. Goong trying to escape for the wall, but here comes Ambition with the flash. Shy. Shy dodges nice distortion, but here comes Space with a kill. Ambition actually gets the killing blow on that one. Meanwhile, nobody getting the dragon. <laughs> Just dragon stalls for everyone. So Goon goes in onto Coco right there just to try and see if he can stall that one out himself. He does succeed. Looks like Goon wants to go for an early Void Staff despite the fact that there is no magic resist on the side of CJ. That's actually a very inefficient buy when there's not any magic resist whatsoever because that percentage really not gonna equate to very much. Could be Rylai's. <laughs> Checkmate. You, ne you never no, know. <laughs> no one suspects the Rylai's LeBlanc. That's right, man. Those those distortions, that slow, it's scary <laughs> stuff. Land those chains easy. Looks like Najin's still going for this dragon. CJ has caught wind of it, but they won't get there in time. Can Space steal it with the... Nope, not quite. Not able to grab it with the rocket. Najin does get that dragon. And they respond with a TP in the top side. Shy didn't have TP, so Najin knew that it was going to be safe. Oh, boy. Oh. Try knocked back into the oh, turret. That's There's not a equalizer. good equalizer. That is not a good equalizer. And Madlife coming in to save his top laner yet again. There's a flash. There's a heal. Shy able to stick around in ambition. Can't really chase Duke under the turret, but at least, at least they saved Shy's life. Man, Coco is. Let's just talk about Coco for a minute. He's doing so much work this game. The rest of his team is not doing particularly well, but it seems like every time Goong tries to make a move, he's there chunking Goong out. You can see he's following so well. Uh oh, Space uh -oh. could get dove here. Space yeah. is gonna get dove here. Maybe yeah. Space won't get dove here. He will. You sure? Space, nope. Space thinks he, oh. Nope, nope he won't. <laughs> they should have actually dove in there, but they didn't know that Ambition was in the mid lane. Yeah, I don't if think they, they had seen ambition. him, then they would have. Oh, wow, Coco. Taking some hits. Still has the flask, still has potions though, so he'll be able to recover quite nicely. Now you can see, look at the warding. Top side belongs to CJ, bottom side belongs to Najin right now. Everything just lit up on both sides. Yeah. Now the map has been divided in a very interesting way this game. Now can CJ turn this into a top lane turret perhaps? Ouch. Coco's just everywhere with those piercing arrows. Pretty cool. Ferris is a fun champion. Shy looks like he's going to go for uh, Zonia's first build. I, I think that they just want some sort of front line right now because if they don't get the Zonia's first, obviously it's helpful to deal with Duke and Lane. Uh, but he could have gone for, say, Arm Guard into Haunting Guys. But I think the, the what they need right now, because Ambition's playing Evil in this game, which means you go Warrior in chance so you don't have any tankiness early, is they need just somebody to stand at the front line, and the only way they can do that is with the Zonia's Hourglass Rumble uh, with a Flame Spitter on to nice. prevent them, to prevent really Dodgin from getting into the back line, which is so vulnerable in this poke comp. That's a really good adaptation, actually, to having this Evelyn, which really isn't ideal in a poke comp situation. That bottom lane turret is nearly down. Ambition, can he sneak up and steal the Rift Scuttler? Did he get it? Nope. Went to watch, went to Najin. Got a ward down. And who will take the second turret of the game here? I mean, Coco has no mana. And he needs to be able to go up and get that blue buff, but he's afraid if he leaves the lane that Goo's just going to kill his tower. So he may have to make a very hard decision right here about the status of his blue buff. And look at that. They see the recall immediately. Duke comes in. He's got the lane pushed. He wants to go for this blue buff. He's going to find it. Goong's going to take the blue buff away from Coco again. This is huge, actually. Yeah, I mean, Varus can be kind of a mana hog sometimes if you're constantly spamming out those piercing arrows. Wow, I actually disagree with Gnar going back to lane right here. Oh. Action, though. Are they going to catch pure here? Ambition not deciding to use the ult. They had him very low, but... They just weren't sure what sort of support he had, and now they're going to lose mid lane turret, or at least a lot of health mm. on it. Ouch. I think that was actually the better call. So I was wondering why Nar didn't go over and help start the blue buff, because they knew that there wasn't a Varus, and uh, the Rumble was recalling. But I think in that situation, 
you just get the damage onto the tower because now there's a tough there's a tough decision that has to be made. If Varus leaves, he's going to lose his turret now because it's low enough. And if Varus doesn't leave, then maybe the turret goes down anyway. You push the lane and then you take the blue buff. But instead, Goon going to safely go for his own blue and then make a play on the bottom. Oh, OQ activated his ult there, but they weren't able to catch space. So Sivir wasting the ult a little bit there. They didn't even get any summoners for it. Coco smartly just using the lens, but ah, Duke is there. Coco going to fire an arrow, but not actually. Well, he got the blue buff, so. Yeah, he got that's, the, that's he the, got the blue buff. So did Goong, though, but has he been delayed enough? Uh, maybe. Ooh, close. Looks like the turtle survived for now. Yeah, there's the Eye of the Storm, just to keep it up for the moment. Mad Life gets there in the nick of time with the shield. Wow, so very interesting play around the mid lane this game, and that buff control has been super important, and this is a very subtle game tactically. Nice play by Goong. Uh -oh. oh, nice catch on the Goong. That's a lot of damage. They popped the passive anyway. Mad Life looking for more CC. Ambition getting chunked out, though, so they're going to have to let that one go. Close call, though, for Najin. We've been seeing so much patience with summoner spells this game in Ultimate. Everyone really seems to be on point, knowing what cooldowns are available. Goong actually just trusting that Pure was going to be there, not actually flashing or, or panicking in any way. Well, oh, Ambition nearly gets caught here. Pure comes in for the knockup, but here comes the Siege now for CJ, and they're going to get this mid lane turret. The power spike that you mentioned earlier, it's starting to happen. Yeah, this is a really good time for them now. But this, the, there's, they've got these side waves to deal with. There's nobody in the side r right now. They're going to have to go down and try and clear out this tier two turret. They're going to get it. So Najin not able to capitalize on the five-man grouping in the mid lane, and instead they just lose a tower. They're still ahead in gold, though. And honestly, for Najin, this is fine. Uh, you're ahead in towers against a siege composition. You're ahead in gold during this mid-game power spike. You did stall it out by taking that first dragon of the game. So. You're still feeling comfortable, I think, if you're Najin. CJ has to make moves now. We'll see what sort of moves they have in mind. I think a move towards Dragon would be in order here. Najin going for it immediately, though. This would be their second if they can take it. And it looks like they probably can, unless Ambition has a pretty fancy play coming up, but doesn't look like they want to try it. This is so good for Najin. Yeah. Absolutely. Two Dragons now, none for CJ. Shy. No, they just weren't collected right there. Oh, Mad Whoa! Life. Oh, Mad Life just getting completely caught there. Coco used his ult too, didn't really make anything happen with it. And it's so scary to be CJ because this composition, uh, basically, Goon can kill anybody right yep. now. He can kill anybody. Uh, Shy has no HP and he has no MR. No one has MR. So, Goon can get these incredible picks at the moment. Ambition isn't tank yet. He only just bought that giant spell. So everyone on CJ, they're they're strong when they're oh, together. Teleport coming TV. in for Najin, trying to come behind space. Can they catch him? Yeah, he's dead. Oh, Ambition, space. He has to go over the long way. Can he make it? Nope. Space in big trouble. They're going to catch Ambition with this too. Shy coming through. There goes space. Najin with one kill, and there's the equalizer. Shy managing to pick off Watch. So they trade one for one. Oh, but here comes Goong onto Coco. Coco. Nearly takes out Goong in response, though. Oh, Poke is pretty serious coming in for Goong here. Yeah, Duke just trying to stall out Coco right there, slow him up so that he can't actually keep following through and poking the entire way. And yeah, Watch just diving a little too deep right there. Shy using his teleport to get into the bottom side, and they do even up in terms of kills. However, getting space much more important at this stage because he's the one necessary to siege some of these towers. and. Honestly, Najin keeps their top or their bottom tower alive there as well. So this is good. This is all very good for Najin. They're doing a good job of stalling out CJ. Yeah, really kind of slowly taking little edges here and there. Kind of similar to last game. You know, CJ really put in a position where they need to think about winning. You know, that miracle fight, finding that miracle pick. And if it does go like last game, it's unlikely that's going to happen. Very, very intense series so far. Yeah. I've been quite impressed by the play of both teams tonight. Those look very good. And this is huge. Victory. This is huge. Yep. That's right. Ambition. Oh, wow, Ambition. What in the world? Oh, Goong nearly getting caught, but escaping yet again. We've seen that happen quite a bit. 
This Varus pick not really working for CJ. Well, Coco has been playing fine. It's not his fault that Ambition has been caught out several times right now and yeah. keeps getting blown up. But when we talk about the problems that this presents, I mean, CJ has to push up so far now just to, to siege a turret uh, with their entire outer ring down. And that means that Goon can hide like anywhere on the map and just come in from the side and wreck them. Pretty much. He's kind of going to have a field day now. Yeah. Ambition has been caught a lot this game. You know, both teams playing well, except, I think, for that. Well, he was not so much of a factor in the early game. Oh, well, they get a tower. That's good. Yep. Managed that. to keep things fairly even gold-wise. And Muramata is complete for Coco as well. So he's doing okay. He's, he's really in a powerful, powerful place right now. But they have to keep pushing forward and trying to even up this gold. I mean, ideally, right now, they'd be three to four or five K ahead. That's kind of where they need to be to compete in the late game because this poke, I mean, once Duke gets more and more tanky, that is, and Alistair already has that huge percent damage reduction on his ultimate. So the poke really not gonna be doing a whole lot. Yep, and we've all seen many, many times what happens to a siege comp that can't siege. And pretty much this, this is what happens to a siege comp that can't siege. Yeah, your back line gets wrecked and you die. Yep, basically. Now ideally, while this is happening, your jungler isn't running in the middle of the enemy team and getting blown up too, but... Well, he shouldn't even be engaging, but this is part of the problem. And a lot of this is... Amb Evelyn is so bad with siege compositions. Like, what, what is Ambition supposed to do? He can't engage. You don't want to engage. Are you, are you just going to stand there and peel with your ultimate? Well, exactly. if you stand in the front of the fight and peel with your ultimate, you're going to get CC'd by Najin's front line and then die it's because Sivir's going to run on top of you. So it's kind of lose-lose in a way from Ambition. He can't defend the towers. He, there's no reason for him to engage. CJ wants to kite, and he can't really peel without dying. So it's not great for him. You have to go back and kind of think, too, about the possibility that that new new pick would have offered again, you know, the ability to peel for your back lines, keep your sieging champions safe. Well, they definitely made that decision to keep watch on something besides Evelyn. That is the decision to deny watch. And they say Nunu, or they would think that Nunu doesn't keep things safe enough against Evelyn. Well, because they, did, they just didn't want watch to play Eve. That's why. Top turret taken by CJ now. It's good. Able to tie things up. An important moment, actually, to get all those outer turrets down. The question is, what's next? Yeah. And how strong can you get before Najin is just unkillable? Duke has his sword mail already. Duke is huge. I mean, we're 30 minutes into this game, and he's got three items, and now he's going to be upgrading that cowl. What do you do here? It's going to take just a massive amount of wards as well, too, to keep track of this LeBlanc. The Aegis is done for watch. I mean, it's all looking very good. He's going to yep. be able to nullify the, the poke from Corky. All they have to worry about is Coco. Yeah, pretty much. And Coco on an immobile champion, if they can catch him, which is fairly easy. Oh, like catching Mad Life. There's a knock-up Shy right there for damage. Ambition drops the ultimate. Pure getting a bit low. Watch those that Q back in. They're going to try to make a play here. Goon getting a little bit chunked up. Pure very low. Wow, the ult from Coco hits nobody. Equalizer pushing Najin back, but not really doing the damage, not really setting anything up for CJ. Now the poke from Coco is all that stands between Najin and this dragon. I think they're just going to have to give low. it up. Yeah, yep. they're too low. They actually can't contest this dragon right now because Ambition was chunked out of that fight. And here we go, another dragon, 3-0 to zero for Najin. They are sitting pretty this game. Coco yeah. and the rest of CJ still looking for that poke, but Najin just staying right out of range. This is really looking like kind of the most one-sided game we've seen so far tonight. Oh, boy, space. Yikes. Well. There are risks to blind picking Varus and blind picking these poke comps. There are. Yes. And you know Goong is an assassin player. And Coco did really well in the early laning phase, to his credit. He did. But the the side lanes didn't do so hot. And that meant that they lost the towers early and Naja got control of Dragon. And you just can't let that happen in this circumstance. Yeah, pretty much. Well, they're going to try to see just mid lane tier two. Wave clears pretty good though. Pure coming in with a flash pulverize onto Mad Life oh and Coco. My. Wow, look at all that damage. Immediately, Pure goes down, but they trade supports. Watch coming in with that Q. Duke 
trying to do something. Watch, kicks him back. Double kill now for OQ. Najin all over this fight. Duke comes in with the Meganar. Shy Zonias, but he is not going to be happy when he comes out of it. Goodbye. Double kill for Goong. That was a pretty clean fight for Najin. They are going for Baron. Watch had such a good insect yeah. to get Coco in that fight, take him out of it, and actually set up this Baron space. Needs to be a hero on this Corky. People are low, but I'm not sure they're low enough. No, it doesn't look like it. Yeah, the Rocket's coming in. He needs to connect with OQ. Duke coming back and just being annoying, and Najin chasing now. I don't know if you blow this up roll right there, but whatever. No, it's going to be up pretty soon, and you're going to go back and buy anyway, so why not? Wow. Well, let's watch that fight again. And what a watch, good watch. initiation from Pure, too, with the flash pulverizing headbutt. And Coco gets out of there, but they, they kind of miss the chain of corruption. And then Coco's charging his Q. Watch <laughs> just ward off flashes. And look at the just the alley oop right there. Goom was actually on top of the end point for Varus as well to get some more damage down. Nice stuff. Yeah. Yeah, Najin has played this game extremely well. And now they are in a pretty large advantage with those three dragons. A little bit of a gold lead, 4K. And with that Baron, they should be able to push the turret lead. Yeah, well, they they want the control around this dragon pit. Oh, man. Tried to surprise him, but yeah. difficult to surprise a little long. I've heard that. <laughs> At least it's a short cooldown ultimate, but they're going to lose their mid lane true too pretty soon. I mean, they're doing what they can in this situation. You have to try to make those plays. You don't, yeah. no, no fault for Coco there whatsoever. Space actually gets his red buff. That's pretty nice. Najin not doing a good job of getting into that jungle early on. And now they have to deal with the Gnar in the top side, and Shai's going to have a hell of a hard time with that task. Yeah, kind of as he has all game long. So you can't get close with, with Rumble because of the hyper and the slow from the boomerang. It's just incredibly difficult. You just continually take harass, and Gnar just can kite you forever. We've seen it many times. Rotating down to the bot lane now. Oh, no, back up to mid. They, if they can take it. Just a little bit more damage on that mid lane turret. I'm just glad that CJ looks better tonight. I was a little bit worried about them hey. after the last couple of matches, but they really did show up to play. And I mean, the fact is, is that Dodgen's also a good team. And I think perhaps uh, I underestimated them a little bit coming into this evening in terms of what they were capable of because their communication looked off and they, because they were against weaker opponents, but they've done a very good job tonight as well. Yeah. Yeah, for their first true tests in a while, three matches, they're doing quite well. And even if CJ loses this match, which it's looking like they will, still a, a well-played set of games yeah. by them. It's a really good best of three. This is definitely one of our best so far this season. Very oh, exciting. Absolutely. But as the game continues, Najin just continuing to grind down CJ, dragging up in a minute 20. And Najin should be in a pretty good position to make sure that they can secure that fourth dragon. That dragon is going to really kind of be a do or die fight for CJ, isn't it? It's a very interesting to me that Dragon has been really the pivotal point of this entire series so far. It's not always like that, but the, each of these teams is so good at snowballing off that objective and turning one Dragon into two, into three, into four, and maintaining that level of control and then dictating the fight once we start hitting that four or five mark that uh, it has become quite pivotal. Yeah, very true. And that mid lane turret could go down any second, too. So many wards for Najin. Yeah. I mean, really, the only way that CJ can come back here is to get picks. And so Najin says, all right, we're ahead. We can invest in uh, a method to make sure that that doesn't happen. Well, good luck getting picks against a poke comp, or with a poke comp, rather, because what That's do you do? You, 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 uh, who are you going to kill? Spell Shield, Sivir with ultimate? Alistair with ultimate, LeBlanc, Lee Sin, who can just ward hop. Well, that's what CJ super, has to do, super though, right? Super tanky Gnar. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's just a bad situation. Yeah. Just, a, frankly, a very terrible situation for CJ to be in. Pretty much impossible. 
Oh, Poku now just has the Bloodthirster too, so he's now pretty much immune to any poke that's going to be coming his way. Well, here's Dragon number four. Najin looks like they're not even going to need to fight over it. CJ might just bum rush the mid lane here, and they will, but they might be in for a rough fight if they keep going. Not even going to try it. They just can't. I mean, they're going to try for an engage here, but I think this is... You know, Duke is so close to having full rage. Oh, Shy just loses like half his health to Goon. Ouch. Oh, here comes Duke coming in with the Mega Nar. Not able to get on top of anybody, though. No ult. Well, this is just one of those compositions from CJ where you hit your timing and you absolutely crush your opponent in the mid game and you close it out very fast. You miss your timing, uh, you let them get the, the turrets first, you don't get that momentum, and you kind of just fall apart because there's you, nothing you can do. You lose a long, agonizing game. Yeah, it's just the nature of this composition, you know. Yep. It's, it's not that CJ necessarily played this terribly because they kept things pretty close, but it just requires that... It requires a, a lot of momentum. Oh, man. He's trying. He does, and you have to, you know? You do. And that is a really hard ultimate to hit, too. Even with the uh, expanded missile width that they, that came into a, a few patches ago, it's still very hard to hit. Does not travel quickly. Now just keep on pressing forward. Wait for that Baron again, Najin says. Yeah. Uh, they just keep on going for these objectives. and. They don't really have great siege. I mean, LeBlanc, Sivir, they're not going to be... They have to dive a turret with Alistair and Nar to really do much of anything here. So fighting, continuing to fight around the Baron and Dragon is definitely going to be their best way to win this game. So I think they're, they're smart not to overcommit right now against CJ, who does have that big advantage when it comes to kiting and so many ways of locking you under the turret to Chain of Corruption Equalizer. You just don't want to put yourself in that situation. Oh, yeah. Much safer just to go get another Baron and methodically play. Whoa, or just try to kill space. You can do that too. Gotta be careful though. Yeah, they may not want to be standing next to each other like that. Kind <laughs> <laughs> of double the poke for free. Nearly six item LeBlanc here. Zonia's Hourglass will wrap things up in terms of Goong's build. Yeah, should be picking that up pretty soon. I don't think he has it yet. No, not quite yet. Oh, no. He's got, it's only his fifth item. Excuse me. Ah. There it is, Zonia. So he didn't see the needlessly large rod already in the inventory. So he's got one more slot left to fill with whatever his heart desires. Yeah, pretty much. Zerat's portal. That's what your heart desires, though. I don't know if it does, actually. Are you, are you peering into the heart of Goong right now? Perhaps. I cannot reveal my <laughs> powers, although by saying that, I kind of imply that I have. You have the power to, to, to see into men's hearts? Uh oh. Let's see if it helps. OQ coming in. Oh, they try to make a play onto Coco. He flashes over the wall. No insect kick for watch this time. Najin has to disengage. A little bit too dangerous to follow up on that one. Nice flash from Coco. Ooh, nice poke from Coco, too. Well, we take a look at what's going on right here. Now, Najin actually got the worst end of that deal. Oh, Goom. Goom comes in. Oh, they managed to get the kill onto Coco, and this is not going to go well for CJ. Equalizer actually pretty good by Shy. Has to Zonia's right away. Goon comes in and manages to pick off space as well. Now Shy on the run by himself. Kick back into Goon. There's a double kill for LeBlanc in this one is all but over as Najin is going to uh, take another turret or two. And with the low health on that mid lane, they can probably just take out an inhibitor. Here. Goong played so well yeah. in that team fight. He basically killed Coco in space by himself. Uh, and then kept on and actually picked up the kill into Shy also. They can end. They can, well, they can end. We'll see if they can end, yeah. Not a, little, not a lot of damage to worry about. Yep. They've got the damage themselves, though, and that is going to be it. So Najin EM Fire playing a great best of three, comes in, takes down CJ Entis at the very end. GG, welcome to the upper tiers of champions, Najin. Been a while since we've seen that. <laughs> After such a tragic season last time around, they're looking so much better, and they've solidified this roster. They really played out that last game well. Goong in particular was great in those team fights. And now they actually are third in yeah. champions. They're one, they have the even match score with Jin Air, but they're one point behind. 
Remember back in the preseason for spring where we came out of it saying it was SK Telecom and Najin that looked the best? Remember how long it's been <laughs> since then? I don't know. We got the Coot Tigers here as well. They're looking good. And CJ really did look fine tonight. I mean, it was a very, very close series. It was very yeah. tightly played by both teams. Uh, extremely fun to watch. And you could really see the, the wheels turning in all the players' heads that game. So I really enjoyed that. CJ may fall a little bit, but there's a lot of season left. Well, funny enough, I mean,